right, uh, let's go through some of the entertainment stories. Uh, uh, speaking of England, the prestigious London Clinic, <clears throat> known for treating members of the royal family, is conducting an investigation into a potential breach of privacy laws. Yeah, no. Uh, Who got? Reports claim that staff at the clinic attempted to view Kate Middleton's private medical records without authorization. <laughs> hey, 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 we've had a breach of protocol. Someone was looking into Kate's privacy. <laughs> the information commissioner's office. I have a bell. A privacy watchdog in the UK confirmed that they have received a breach report and are currently investigating the matter. Uh, okay, that is such a such a violation. Totally. I mean, and yet it'll happen, and you never hear about people being prosecuted. Uh, the NHS staff can face criminal charges for accessing private medical records without permission. The London uh, clinic immediately contacted Kensington Palace for the report uh, to report the breach after. Uh, detecting the unauthorized access. Do you remember pre um, HIPAA laws? Oh yes, where oh, yeah. people's medical information was just freely discussed. I've had it, and the idea oh, it's right there on the coffee table. The idea With of who? that now is just ludicrous. Yeah, I mean, like in uh, doctors, doctors. So Could of course, you? yeah. The, the, then the protections came down where you're, you're, you know, you'll hear Doctor Mike say, I, "I'm, you know, I'm your doctor." Is it okay if I mention yeah. this? Yes, or at the pharmacy. Well, I, yeah. I didn't realize like. That it wasn't always like that. You no, know? no. Mm -hmm. and they, and not, mind you, there was a, a, a suggested protocol that you didn't go. Certainly. Like, hey, you should see the tumor on the guy. You know, uh, the you but now do that. we saw, we saw now like, the, now every it's, time. Every time I go to um, Penn, like to yeah. see a doctor, I sign a form that says like yep. th these are my rights. Yep. Hey, getting back to this Kate Middleton thing, are you guys surprised at how big and ridiculous this scandal is? Because it seems to me to be not a, a lot of nothing. Oh uh, wait, about about her just being like, sick and then uh, it's sort of like a conspiracy. Maybe theory she's dead. Building on another one, on another one. Yeah. I don't know if it's like a slow news time or That's whatever. Exactly. But what I was thinking it the same with the, thing. With the photos. Yeah. And, and like, and I get that the people are obsessed with the royals. I understand that, but to me, there's just not a whole lot of there. There. I, it's I don't know. The price on the country that invented the dinosaur. Yeah. I I don't know. I I'm 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 becoming desensitized to becoming yeah. surprised. If you know what sure. I mean. Sure. Yeah. That's, I, mean? I know exactly what you like, mean. Like, oh, here's another one. Right. <laughs> and, and this one just seems to be, um, I don't know, Stupid. It, it, not as much, um, it's, not, it's not as interesting to me. It doesn't mean it's not interesting. It is kind of boring as far as can these yeah. conspiracies go. Yeah. Yeah. Throwing a Loch Ness monster or something. Right. Yeah. Here is, uh, here's a follow-up uh, story about Richard Simmons. He's opening up about a cancer diagnosis. On Tuesday, the 75-year-old fitness trailblazer got candid about the moment that he learned he had skin cancer in an emotional post on Facebook. Uh, he said he first noticed this, quote, strange-looking bump under my right eye, which didn't disappear, prompting him to call his dermatologist. He said, I sat in his chair. He looked at it through a magnifying mirror, and he told me that he would have to scrape it and put it under a microscope. And now I'm getting a little bit nervous. And he comes back about 20 minutes later and says the C word, you have cancer. Uh, Simmons said that he was told that he had uh, basal cell carcinoma mm -hmm. and advised to see a cancer doctor as soon as possible. Uh, after his diagnosis, uh, Simmons said that he went to see Dr. Ralph A. Massey, and he recalled meeting other skin cancer cancer patients in the waiting room. He said, I was shocked to see all of the skin cancers that they had. Some had cancer on the top of their heads, their face, and their neck, he wrote. Uh, he went on to share how the doctor explained the treatment process, he said that um, he was told the doctor would, quote, burn my skin to remove the cancer cells. Uh, there was no numbing. It just had to be done with a small instrument. He said, as he started burning my skin, a tear dropped down my cheek. The burning really hurt my skin. It lasted about 30 minutes. And according to Simmons, the doctor told him to come back in an hour and a half to find out if the procedure removed all the cancer. He said, I went back. Uh, to some sad news, he burned my face again. Uh, this time was worse than before. It was deeper. I did not cry this time, but I did grit my teeth. Uh, and he concluded the post with to be continued. Um, he is definitely becoming, <laughs> he's far more commun communicative than he's been in years. And yeah. I like that. So I, I yeah. like that. I think we are on the precipice of him rejoining Society, whatever that means. Yeah. yeah, that would be nice. So, uh, to what the extent uh, this yeah. cancer has, you know, maybe hopefully they got it early enough and it's no and big deal. Good, yeah. um, but uh, we'll see. But it certainly is scary for anybody. Oh, it's sad to see this. Casey, you love this guy, Steve. I know you do as well. 
Uh, character actor M. Emmett Walsh. The diving who, coach from Back to School? That's him, oh, yeah. Oh, he's, he's countless roles. Uh, who brought his unmistakable face and unsettling presence to films, including Blood Simple and Blade Runner, has died at the age of 88. He has a huge uh, list of he's credits. So The same guy who's so good and intense in Blood Simple is the same, is the lunatic and the jerk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Walsh died uh, from cardiac arrest on... <laughs> Tuesday at a hospital in St. Albans, uh, Vermont. He's funny in Fletch. He's funny in Raising Arizona. Yep. St. Albans, that's, uh, I think that's where LeClaire's from. Uh, John LeClaire? Yeah. Okay. Not that that matters. Maybe they hung out. Maybe he was there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Maybe he held his hand as he passed. The ham-faced, heavyset Walsh often played good old boys with bad intentions, as he did as one in uh, one of his rare leading roles as a crooked Texas private detective in the Coen Brothers' first film, yeah. the 1984 neo-noir Blood Simple. Uh, Walsh played Crazy Sniper in the 1979 <laughs> Steve Martin comedy The Jerk. He was a prostate-examining doctor in 1985 Chevy Chase's vehicle Fletch. In 1982's Blade Runner, um, he in a film he said was grueling and difficult to make, he plays a hard-nosed police captain who pulls Harrison Ford from retirement to hunt down cyborgs. Um, here's a, a little bit about his background. Um, he was raised on Lake Champlain in Swanton, Vermont. He went to a tiny high school with a graduating class of 13 people. Wow. And then he went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York City, and he act, acted exclusively on stage. And he had no intentions of doing otherwise uh, for a decade. But slowly, he started to make film appearances. In 1969, he had a bit role in Alice's Restaurant Mm -hmm. and didn't start playing prominent roles until nearly a decade after that when he was in his 40s. So he was really a late bloomer. He was well along. It was Blood Um, Simple where everyone first really took note of him. In fact, uh, he was shooting Silkwood with Meryl Streep in Dallas in the autumn of 1982 when he got the offer for Blood Simple. Uh, he was still working into his late 80s, making recent appearances and on the TV series The Righteous Gemstones. <laughs> he plays the grandfather. Oh, yeah, I haven't watched it. And he's in uh, American Gigolo, and his more than 100 film credits include uh, he's in Knives Out and Outlaw Posse that was released this year. So the guy worked up to the very and in case he also have to mention Harry and the Hendersons. Yes. Oh, he's yeah. right. He owns the, the gun store. He's yeah, the he's dad. Yeah, he's father. Yeah, yeah that's so. right. That's sad news, man. That guy, he's Robert. been in so much stuff. So. A, a, a good career. What a life. He has a line in uh, Raising Arizona where he's uh, they're discussing he and Nick Cage about uh, you know somebody who uh, gets in trouble, and Emma Walsh goes, no, not that mother scratcher. <laughs> <laughs> His delivery is so damn good. Uh, he, he, like in Fletch, you know that... Yeah. You know, the, yeah. the whole exchange with Chevy Chase mm-hmm. is just so damn good. In fact, we were just talking about HIPAA. He, 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 uh, he right. starts asking yeah. him about it in the uh, uh, Alan Stanwyck, and he's like, you know I can't talk about another That's patient. Right. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Uh, moving on, after a turbulent year, the true status of Megan Fox's relationship with Machine Gun Kelly has remained somewhat of a mystery to fans. But it's been tearing me apart. The actress uh, refused to clarify the current status of their relationship during an appearance, but she did confirm that she and MGK had, a at some point, ended their engagement. So, yeah. So, this is, I think this uh, this relationship is over. Yeah. I this this uh, I've always thought that the people that go from zero to sixty right away it's too much. It's usually it's performative. It seems like it doesn't work yeah, out. Not I agree. Yeah, you know. Nothing is over. It's over. <laughs> this one is over. <clears throat> MGK, make it fast. So was, much plastic surgery makes me want to vomit. I was not expecting <laughs> Rambo to. That's uh, for entertainment news. <laughs> to get so fired MGK, up about make it this. Fox, it's over. <laughs> Nothing's over. It's over! Okay. Nothing is over! This one's over. The uh, interviewer said, you got engaged, and I think it was called off, and then we don't know what's going on with you. How would you describe your relationship with him? And she said, I think that what I've learned from being in this relationship is that it's not for public consumption. So I think as of now, I don't have a comment on, like, the status of the relationship like, per se. I'll stay with you if you get the dumbest tattoo ever. And then she says, what I can say is that if, uh, is that what I refer to as being my twin soul... <laughs> And they will always be a tether to him no matter what. I can't say for sure what the capacity will be, but I will always be connected to him somehow. Yeah, yeah, of course, man. It's a crime room. 
But she goes on to say, beyond that, I'm not willing to explain. But all those things you said were accurate things <laughs> that have occurred. And I can see them being confusing or interesting to people and them being like, what's up? What a, what a duplicitous bunch of bull crap. Yeah. So he had said, I think you, the, the interviewer said, I think you, you got engaged and I think it's called off. So she indicated that that is true. Her final uh -huh. comment confirmed speculation that she had ended her engagement. Yeah, uh, she's for, looking, um, she's that getting guy. that otherworldly thing going on now, that alien yeah. sort of stuff. She's, she's got a lot. effing with herself a lot. Yeah. She's finally copped to having lots of plastic surgery. Yeah, didn't she admit she had some kind of body dysmorphia? She did, yeah. and I, my heart goes out to anyone who's ha who has sure. that. But at the point that she had it, and I, go, I know your reality is your reality, mm -hmm. but Preston, at the point she had it, she was gorgeous. She was already yeah, yeah. one of the most stunning women yeah, yeah. that you'd ever seen. So, but uh, he's tinkering. But we'll see. So, Bam Margera is off the hook on charges filed in connection with an incident at the Radnor Hotel in August. Uh, he had faced counts of disorderly conduct and public drunkenness, but uh, both charges were withdrawn. Do you know who saw who served as a witness in the uh, in, in front of the court? Mm -mm. A fox. A fox. Shut came up. Out. Yeah. Wow. Uh, he the was Radner Fox. He was cited <laughs> August 9th after Radner police received a call about an argument between a man and a woman at the Radner Hotel between 3 and 4 a.m. Uh, police allegedly found Bam to be intoxicated and he was taken into custody and brought to the local police station before being released to a friend. Uh, the withdrawal of those charges is the latest legal development for him. He still faces another ongoing case. Uh, and is scheduled for a court date on Monday in Chester County. That's in connection with the big incident where right, he right, apparently right. assaulted Jesse, his brother, and uh, made uh, terroristic threats uh, toward family members. Those are the charges, anyhow. So, so. two things about Bam. Uh, following him on Instagram, he is back on the skateboard. He had actually injured himself recently, but yeah. he's getting pretty good. Banged his head pretty Banged good. Banged his head oh, pretty yeah. good. And he is also... Actively working the convention route. He's yeah. doing tons okay. of convention work and appearing all over the country. Okay. Um, sad news. This is out of the Yellowstone uh, realm, Kathy. Cole oh. Hauser's mother, Cass Sperling Warner, passed away. She was 76. Aww. And she was a bigwig in the movie industry. Yeah, he comes um, from a, a movie family. Yeah, the Yellowstone actor did not reveal any details surrounding his mother's passing, but did share the news on social media with some loving words about the woman who raised him. He said, it's with a heavy heart that my... Mother Cass Sperling Warner passed away at the age of 76. He wrote in the caption, her kindness, love, humor, and amazing spirit will be missed by not only my family, but the world. You have touched so many. So he chose a special picture of them uh, to include in the post. The picture, has, picture shows uh, he and Warner on horseback, smiling for the camera on the set of Yellowstone. Hauser, who plays Rip Wheeler on Yellowstone, comes from a Hollywood bloodline rich in cinematic history. Warner is the granddaughter of the co-founder of Warner Brothers Studios, Harry Warner. It's pretty big. And the daughter of Milton Sperling, a writer and producer. She spent her childhood on the Warner Brothers studio a lot and eventually studied acting and screenwriting before starting her own production company called Warner Sisters. Uh, she Sister. won numerous awards for her work behind the camera. And she also wrote a book about her family's history in the business called The Brothers Warner. Uh, Hauser is expected to reprise his role of Rip Wheeler when Yellowstone returns this fall. The second part of season five is supposed to begin filming this spring, and they're looking to release that in uh, November of this year. Uh, he is the reason why the show could go on without uh, ah, Kevin Costner. Is that okay. good? Yeah. So his yeah. father is a, a known actor who's been in a ton of stuff, uh, a character actor, Wingshauser. And I guarantee oh, I you, okay. you've seen Wingshauser in a, in a movie here or there. I mean, the guy worked, or I, I, I think he's still alive, but just his movie, his list of credits is huge. Okay. Yeah. Uh, That's him up there pressing on the screen. Looks oh, yeah. Vaguely yeah. That's yes, Wingshauser familiar. I'd have to see other pictures. He he's kind of scruffy. Ton um, of stuff. Did it say how she died? Because she's kind of young. Yeah, it doesn't say. I'm not really sure. All right, uh, a couple other things. Uh, David Schwimmer is set to uh, set to star in Goosebumps season two at Disney Plus. Goosebumps, <laughs> Goosebumps. Uh, the show aired its first season on the streamer in October 2023. Season two was announced in February, along with the news that the show would be going to an the anthology route. With the second season set to feature an entirely new cast and story, uh, Schwimmer is the first new confirmed cast member. 
Uh, the official description of the new season states, teenage siblings discover a threat stirring, triggering a chain of events that unravel a profound mystery. As they delve into the unknown, huh. the duo find themselves entangled in the chilling tale of four teenagers who mysteriously vanished in 1994. So, season one was Justin Long, I believe. Uh, Nick, if you could do a quick check on that, I think he was the, the main nemesis in that. Okay. That and and, and it, it got very good reviews. Yeah. Yeah, Disney Plus uh, series. Yeah, Justin Long. You're right, Steve. Wait, so David Schwimmer wasn't in the first one? No, he was not. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a whole new cast. Okay. So Schwimmer will star in the role of Anthony, described as a former botany professor and divorced parent of teenage twins whose world takes tumultuous a uh, turn <laughs> as he juggles the responsibilities of overseeing an aging parent while having his kids for the summer. Uh, while exact details about the new season remain under wraps, the fact that he is playing a botany professor hints that the season will be referenced will reference the Goose Gersperm's book, <laughs> Stay Out of the Basement, with one of the main characters of that book being a botanist. I so. enjoy that. I enjoy the yeah, movies. The movie I was enjoy fun. the series. I'm, 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 I'm a massive horror fan, and this is light, fun, you know, a tween sort of horror, and it, it, and it's it's you know it's meant to be light. And I hope it's something good for for David Schwimmer. Yeah, because he doesn't do a whole lot now. He could direct his. He's done a fair amount of directing as well. Um, Seesaw Films, production company behind The King's Speech and The Power of the Dog, will be a adapting the children's classic The Neverending Story what? into a series of live action uh, feature films. Are you a fan of the original? Yeah, but I, I, I haven't watched it in yeah. so long that I really don't remember a lot about it. Yeah. Uh, the novel by Michael Enda, uh, published in 1979, tells the story of a Bastion Balthazar Bucks, mm -hmm. a young boy who finds himself in the magical world of Fantastica after entering the book. Uh, previous adaptations of the book were made in the 1980s and early 90s and became cult classics but received mixed reviews. Uh, but I remember liking the the movie. Yeah, you know, I, I thought, I was, uh, eh, when I first saw it, and then I saw it a few more times, I'm like, I love the concept of this, that he's fighting, he's basically fighting the lack of imagination, the nothing. Right, the nothing. Yeah. Brian Cox is set to voice Santa Claus in Netflix's upcoming festive animated feature, That Christmas. Uh, Santa's got to go. Yeah, uh, that Christmas Bill is... Bill is retired. He could do this. ...is adapted from the children's book series by BAFTA winning and Oscar-nominated writer and director Richard Curtis. Wait, we know him. Richard Curtis? He was on our plane. He was on our plane <laughs> on the way back from Florida. Classroom? The yeah. classroom. Yeah, I forgot to tell you that, Steve. I ran into Richard Curtis from oh. the airport. Yeah, and, and Kathy and uh, Preston and I flew home together, and he was uh, passed out. Yeah, Richard had a good time. He was partying. Leave yeah, me alone. He, he partied hard. I think he was, he was tired, guys. He's tired. Leave yeah. me alone. Shut up. He's a professional. Uh, he is. He's great. So Richard Curtis, the director, oh, did Four yeah. Weddings and a Funeral in Notting Hill. Alongside Brian Cox, uh, Fiona Shaw, Jody Whitaker, and Bill Nye have also joined the film nice. as the residents of a charming seaside town where things turn upside down one Christmas. Yeah! <laughs> oh, my God! Brian Cox can be very subtly funny. Uh, he's he's hilarious in the Super Troopers movies. Oh, he's terrific. And he's I mean he's he's funny in Succession, although he's terrifying in Succession. And if, if you ever read the stories of the uh, the uh, Broken Lizard guys working with him, oh, yeah, it's very funny. Oh it's, yeah, oh very funny. All right, because he he is quirky, you know. Yep. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel's production company Kimmelot is smoking. Uh, they have scored a weed reality series with Hulu, and it is producing. Uh, it will be producing High Hopes. With ITV America for the streamer. High Hopes, which launches on April 20th, 420. Ah. Follows two brothers running their weed business in a new age of legal cannabis in Los Angeles. The six-part series follows Belarus-born brothers Slava and Mishka and their stoned crew through the trials and tribulations of taking their cannabis business to new heights. Did you see the preview? No. It's got Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg and Jimmy's in the hospital, and instead of putting an oxygen mask on his face, they put a weed mask on his face. It's, it's really ridiculous and very funny. As one of the oldest uh, cannabis dispensaries in Hollywood, MMD attracts a wild mix of weed-loving customers and is a home away from home for their OG employees who work hard and smoke harder. I was reading about the industry out there, and because... Because of state restrictions, um, it's actually made it harder for these dispensaries to exist. But what it has made easier is for the illegal ones to flourish. The season builds to their biggest day of the year, 420, as the gang attempts to expand nationwide and release their own top shelf cannabis brand, by the way. So uh, Jimmy Kimmel's crew is behind that. Um, so I know this is 
uh, not normal because we usually do this on Friday, but there is a new movie opening today. I don't know. Do, do we want to do it? Nah, just, just part of it. There you go. All right, so uh, Roadhouse. We'll do the full thing tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roadhouse is opening today. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Action drama starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Danielle uh, Melchior. Melchior, I think. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Conor McGregor. Uh, in this adrenaline-fueled reimagining of the 80s cult classic, ex-UFC fighter Dalton takes job as a bouncer at a Florida Keys Roadhouse only to discover that this paradise is not all it seems. Hour and 54 minutes long. It's rated R, streaming today on Amazon. And Rotten Tomatoes scores 69%. That's pretty good. I'm going to I'm gonna check it out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the like Rotten to Tomatoes, it. the original Roadhouse, is only at like 41%, which, you know, I wholeheartedly disagree. The audience score is bigger than that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, listen, if... He doesn't rip somebody's throat out. Uh, and this whole thing is one of my favorite, yeah. favorite parts. I used to F guys like you in prison. That guy, by the way, if you watch, they did a whole series of documentaries. I am Chris Farley. I am Patrick yeah. Swayze. That guy, that actor, I would try to get him, you know, to contact him somehow through social media to get him on the show. He thought he thought Patrick Swayze was a joke when he ended up. That scene yeah. was the first scene they shot together. <laughs> yeah, no and and he showed, and then Swayze started moving and doing the fighting. He said, "Let's, you can hit me. Go ahead." And in that fight, they bonded, and and like he starts crying. He he became like Patrick Patrick Swayze became his dear friend. No really? yeah, kidding, absolutely, he adored oh. Patrick Swayze. He had a stupid looking earring, if he I remember correctly. Yeah, it was like one of those little hangy ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It, was just, it was way out of place. Remember the movie? That, I, that would have been the first thing I would have gone for yeah, if yeah. I would have fought him. Rip it out. Rip it out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering, I, listen, I, I, when I heard about this, I was anti-it, and then I'm, I'm pro- Roadhouse remake. Yeah. I think I might wait, save this for the weekend. For the week. I'll tell you why. I think also Jake Gyllenhaal is apparently a huge fan of the original. Is he? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah didn't he show up in the premiere wearing uh, Patrick Swayze's jacket? I think he did, yeah. yeah he yeah. wanted to pay homage to, to Swayze. That's pretty cool. All right, we are ready for clips now. Uh, there's something very strange going on in the Covenant where a young nun who left her life in America appears in the Italian countryside. And in this clip, Sydney Sweeney talks about going out on her own to make the film immaculate. I auditioned for this film when I was 16. And they never ended up making the movie. And I could not stop thinking about it. I reached out to my agents and I was like, I want to find where the script is and I'm going to figure out and teach myself how to make it and just put the entire team together. And it was amazing. What about our huge freaking hooters, huh? Uh, Immaculate hits theaters this Friday. So she's a she's a nun and she ends up pregnant without having sex. And they're like, oh, mm. it heard that actually, story before. It looks pretty good. All Isn't right. that the... Um, it's another plot of a... Of a uh, yeah. Uh, Agnes of God? Ag Agnes of God. Was that similar to yeah, that? I think that's similar. Oh, yeah. I, it wasn't a nun, but I'm watching uh, Jane the Virgin, which is... Oh, Jane the Virgin, right. Is yeah. that kind of like that, too? I don't know. She, yes, she's a it's virgin. A and she's pregnant. Yeah, yeah. yeah whatever. Uh, <laughs> whatever. You don't yeah. want to join me? Here's the next clip. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have some wine? <laughs> In Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, the Spengler family leaves Oklahoma to help the original Ghostbusters who have developed a top secret research lab. And here, Dan Aykroyd recalls his initial thoughts about putting on the suit again. Um. Well, I thought... Uh that uh, I was very happy that Taylor made the alteration so it fit would fit me. Yeah. Very happy that it uh, that it, it it looked the same to me, but of course it wasn't. Yeah! Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire opens on Friday. Do you know who's gotten very uh, lovely uh, in that in that bizarre? I can't believe they're going up sort of way. The girl McKenna Grace, the actress. She she was I know the it, name. A little I can't girl think in of so her. many things. She's in this. And and she's now it's like what the, when did that happen? Did she play young Carol Danvers in uh, Captain yes, Marvel? Yes, I believe she does. Yeah, person? yeah. Okay. Um, she's oh, in, oh, she's oh in you, you know, you know she was in Gifted in The Handmaid's Tale. She is a great actress. She's tremendous. Yeah. If, if you've never seen the movie Gifted uh, with Chris Evans, and she's probably. I don't know, seven or eight years old in that. She has movie. that Haley Joel Osment thing. Yeah, where she is, um, she's an old soul. Yeah, uh, very talented actress. All right, cool. I'm on board.
Uh, and that's your entertainment report, folks. Yay! We, yay! <laughs> we will take a break. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back and we will get our Thursday morning in full gear. We got some stuff to give away and things to do. So why don't you hang out for a bit? We'll be right back. I just Will you MMR? We had, uh, yesterday I said this guy uh, sent us every year, sends us a gigantic box of... Uh, of Easter candy, and Casey just pulled out a chocolate covered egg, which are wonderful. The Reese's uh, yeah. chocolate covered eggs. I dare you to put that on top of one of the sticky buns and eat. That. <laughs> I dare you. They're not here yet. All right, They're not now here we're yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm no. going to have a little appetizer. Okay, oh, no, 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 no. no. We're not getting out of hand. What we are is setting up a bold new research center. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Is yes. That what exactly. We're doing? Uh, but, uh, yeah, Mr. Sticky is going to be by in a little while. We'll do some giveaways uh, in conjunction with this. Some of that real sticky, icky, icky. Oh, wait. That's like uh, when women start to PMS and they get cravings and stuff like that. Like, that's like, you, you're like, ooh, yeah. This, that, ooh, that would oh, sound like would that would work. Yeah. All right, uh, well, let's dive into the world of research because oh. we've taken a little break and it's time to return to the Just Whoa. Saying Institute. Home of the Gary Lauer Scarecrow and Robotics Institute. <laughs> <laughs> the JSI, ever expanding. So we talked a little while about um, bed rotting and herkle durkle. Yes, yeah, which is where you kind of veg out. Bed yeah. rotting, that sounds terrible. You lie in bed. My youngest, uh, Caroline, yesterday has been... Uh, Sick and uh, laid in bed all day, and I'm like, you know what they uh, what they're calling that these days? And turned to me and just said, goes bed rotting. I go, yeah, I guess I'm late to the party. <laughs> this has been around for a while. But I also said herkle durkle, and they already knew about that. But bed rotting is the act of spending all day bundled up with nothing on the agenda, uh, lying in bed while well, experts say a day of duvet day watching TV, <laughs> duvet day, and resting can be healthy. Uh, a bed rotting session should not, however, span multiple days. Yes, you listen. Can't do it all the time. If it gets to the point where the only way you can leave your house is in the back of a flatbed, yeah. you spend too much time herkle durkling. If you're pushing the poop down with your feet, yeah, <laughs> you have gotten past the point of return. Yep. I was uh, herkle durkling um, uh, last week when I was in South Carolina. And my awesome. son was doing his thing, and I had like nobody to like really hang out with, and so, so I kind of herkle durkled, and it felt good. For a while. For a little bit. And then I started to feel a certain way about it. And I was like, I got to go do something. I don't right. know. Did you pound the salami? <laughs> That's an adjunct to, uh, yeah. to, uh, to bed or... rotting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this can be a sign. So if you do it for multiple days, it can be a sign of another problem like depression or burnout. <laughs> That's, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I, guilt for some reason kicks in on me quickly. So I love those days. Like if it's, if, to me, if it's bad weather, that's mm. sort of carte blanche. Yeah. You got no re you got no place to go. Right. And so that makes it easier to herkle yeah. herkle. Yeah. I looked at the weather forecast uh for Saturday and um I don't have to get up and go anywhere on Saturday morning and it's supposed to rain on yes. Saturday. Whoa. And there was a part of my Steve, like I was like, Oh good. I don't have to get up. I don't have to get anywhere. The rain's going to actually yeah. want, make me want to stay in bed for a little while longer. Sure. I, I look forward to Saturday morning now and herkling and durkling. <laughs> uh, so according to uh, stress relieving coach Liz uh, Tenuto, she said, while there's nothing wrong with bed rotting every now and then to recharge batteries, doing this frequency, which is uh, three times per week or more, is a sign that your nervous system is actively shutting down. What about decomposing? Decomposing? That's probably... That's bad, right? Slightly worse yeah. than bed rotting. Uh, experts also recommend being aware of excessive social media use. Yes. And food intake during these uh, bed rotting days. You don't want to sit there just scrolling like crazy. So the other day, and I don't do it often, but the other day I was in one of my rare scrolling loops uh -huh. on social media and I was sitting on the couch I'm like, what in the mother well, F am I doing? What am I doing? What yeah. am I doing? Uh, I know. And I, I'm not usually yeah. subject to being seduced by that, but I was. I'd rather <laughs> I'd rather go on, on YouTube and find a longer yes. form What's, oh, yes. yeah. video. Illuminate yourself. Entertaining or informing. It's more satisfying. Or porn. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I don't know. I uh, I watched a two-year-old kid become like best friends with a crow last night. Uh, yeah. I, I like stuff like that. Just a little two-minute little video. And then okay. I'll just remember, the will one. you please remember for me? Yeah. All crows are not like that. Yeah. And we learned nothing from the fox video. You're right. <laughs> this is true. 
All right, so bed rotting for too long is uh, All not, right. not a good thing. All right, let's move on. Uh, this I was actually delighted to see. So there is a new test. It is a skin biopsy uh, that can detect an abnormal protein that people with Parkinson's have oh, wow. in their nerves. And here's the deal about Parkinson's is it's one of those things where they tell if you have it or not from the symptoms. There's no right. real like a blood test. hard yeah. line test that says you have this problem. And there are, there are a whole host of things that are like yeah. that. If you've ever, you know, as, as you age, you start to know more people who have conditions and so on. And you realize, wait a minute, there's no... You can't do like a blood test. And do you know what I'm saying? If you have this, ALS and things like that. The rock and pneumonia. And the boogie woogie flu. Can, there is no yeah. blood test. Well, um, uh, pancreatic cancer is another one. Yes. Uh, no, I, I heard... It's probably one of those things, Nick, that's 20 years away. But they, they've made a little bit of an inroad on perhaps... Um, being able to get out ahead of it with a with a with a uh, the, a blood marker, but I well, digress. Anything that they can do in advance of any of these diseases yeah. is a great thing. Yeah. So my mom had these uh, head tremors, and, every, and we were all like, "This is Parkinson's right, disease." Right. And it, right. It went on for years of them trying to find out. No, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. And it's like, well, it seems like she does. Does but so I mean, it's it's one of those things where if they can pinpoint whether it is or not, then you have a clear direction on mm -hmm. treatments. And, and you can get to work on it sooner. So and the sooner, get, the better. We, you have Herkel Durkel. <laughs> can we do this now? or? Yeah, so the skin test is an important part of the progress uh, researchers are making against Parkinson's, the second most common age-related neurodegenerative condition, which is on the rise and a major driver of disability, dementia, and death. Uh, it's made by CND Life Sciences, and it is one of a few in use or development to allow doctors to diagnose Parkinson's based on biology rather than symptoms that can take years to appear. Uh, the skin test basically, according to Dr. Joseph Janovich with uh, Baylor College of Medicine, said the skin test basically is a window into the brain uh, where the test is used to diagnose patients and conduct research. Uh, the test accurately detected the abnormal alpha synuclein protein in 93% of people who had already been diagnosed with their symptoms with Parkinson's. You mentioned something that I think might be pretty cool, an actual window into your brain. Actual. That might mm, be kind of cool. A glass Take yeah, a look in there. portal yeah. <laughs> where we can just see uh -huh. into it. Wow. Uh, so it detected the protein at high rates in participants with similar disorders, including dementia and Lewy bodies. So dementia is another thing. My mom has dementia and it's, there's no real test for it. It is simply the symptoms that indicate. Is yeah, so you have a series of these symptoms. Do they match up with each other? And, and then they have to observe it over time. So Robin Williams passed from Louis Body. Yes, so, correct. Uh, um, so uh, a quick thing on that, and I don't know, you're, you're not an expert, we're going to ask. Um, they, that, the symptoms of Louis Body dementia parallel... Parkinson's in a way? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure, yeah. Steve. I've, I've, Kathy, you know, you're the doctor. <laughs> we've read a few things here and there, but I, I don't know. It may. It might, Steve. Uh, the test can help doctors rule out uh, diseases with similar symptoms that might be treated differently or have different prognoses, and patients with symptoms of Parkinson's are often misdiagnosed. Another test finds uh, the protein in spinal fluid, and researchers are also working on tests using blood, nasal swabs, and tears. Uh, the goal is to detect the protein in people years before they develop symptoms and treat them with drugs that could slow or stop the Interesting. disease. Interesting. Yes. Steve, you're in the right neighborhood. Uh, so Lewy body dementia is an umbrella term for two similar and common subtypes of dementia, including Parkinson's disease. Okay. So they, they are related. All right. All right. Uh, I have another uh, cautionary from story. From the Just Saying Institute? Yeah, from the Just Saying Institute. Uh, Kathy, you and Steve both use the uh, Neomed uh, rinses. Yes. yes. The nasal rinse. Uh, recent research has unveiled a second type of deadly amoeba. Oh, of course. We're going to die. Associated yeah. with the use We're of... We're going to die. No, we, we are not because I use <laughs> distilled water. Yes, of neti pots yes. and nasal sinus rinsing. So Dr. Uh, Pooja Apal, family medicine, says tap water may contain low levels of organisms that are harmless when ingested, but can pose serious well, risks if from, used for nasal from irrigation. From day one, Preston, when Dr. Mike recommended the nail men, said do not use tap water, yep. use distilled water, and I do all the time. Yeah. Or water that I boiled 
And Do you, you actually boil the water? I love putting boiling water up my nose. <laughs> no, no uh, uh, I'll just I do. buy this, d- the distilled no, water. The dis- if, I, if I run out, but right now at home, I have about five gallons of distilled water. And you know, sometimes uh, they run out. They run out. Yeah, I, I know. know. So whenever they have yeah. it at Target, I like stock up. I go, go down so an alley. So, yeah. uh, what's the word on uh, distilled water? They do run out of distilled water because one time I went to go get some for this very reason and they didn't have any, but they had what's the other. Type of water. Like Pedialyte? No, no, no. It's a type of water. What's that? Purified? Purified water. Yeah, that's Not different. the same thing. Yeah. 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 I, I looked it up. I'm like, yeah. can I use mm-hmm. this? And they're like, no, you cannot. It, uh, purified is for drinking. Distilled is for meal meds and, it might, and humidifiers. It might have been another term besides purified, too, that I'm... That I'm that's escaping me, but um, but does this report just say don't use tap water? Like that's anybody who uses the Neil Med knows that. Yes. Okay. Maybe spring water. I thought there was going to be like mm, something else. Spring water. All right. Well, anyway. Uh, yeah, no. because it has happened. It has happened where people have done. People have died. Have died from from uh, this amoeba getting into their brain. You never want an amoeba in your brain. No. Yeah, well, but ha- essentially the story is that they're they have uh, they they've unveiled a, a second type of amoeba associated. I didn't like the first one. I know, right? Yeah. That was enough. How do you clean your Neil meds? I, 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 I swap them out. So every 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 couple of weeks... You'll just buy a new When you buy the bottle. new pack of, of Neil Med packets, they include a, a new... Okay. Oh. Yeah. I never really... Some, I didn't clean mine. I know, well, because <laughs> I don't want to put it in the dishwasher because I'm afraid of what... You know, because of stuff like this. Like, right. is the soap going to stay in there? You can hold so it I in I the just, toilet when you flush. No. I should take care of it. <laughs> so I just rinse it and then I, I store it upside down so that all the water drips yeah. out yeah. and no mold I, creates that's in there. That's what we would do. I do that and you, I, you don't put the, 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 the black spray back unit in. back on. You let it yeah. soak in air out. But every... every and then buy new weeks, one. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it comes with it anyway. Okay. So anyway, pass not long. Don't use tap water. No! Never, you. ever, ever. Never I mean, use, ever use tap water. All right. Ever. Uh, let's see. A study from the Ohio State University. The Ohio State University. The fudge. Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah. Sorry, that's, yeah. uh, what is that's, that? That's from Key and Peele. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fudge. fudge. Well, they go through the entire um, teams that they play for. Bismo <laughs> Thank you. I am so sorry, Preston. That's all right. I haven't seen that one. That's not the like the one with the names. Is it, it is. It? Yeah, it's it's so okay. that's such a great I bit. That is. Jordan, yeah. Jordan Peele. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, a never-ending bit. Like how yes. many times have they redone it? Uh, uh, like, I've seen a few different yeah, at least five or six. Yeah. yeah. It's all right. So not to go off on a change here. Okay. <laughs> There's just another one that's making the rounds, and it's one of my favorites. Where they, they, the the two uh, MMA fighters. The, the one guy is is a very religious sort of. Have you ever seen this one? No. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna beat his ass. I will deliver him into the hands of Allah. And they come back to the other guy, what, what do you say? And it, it just gets more and more accelerated. It's hilarious. It's along the lines of the bit you're talking okay. about. The Those one, guys were so good. Sorry to go off on a key and yeah. peel thing, but, but the one that, that's been popping up in my uh, algorithm is where it's like a uh, it's a chef competition. Have you seen that one? Oh, remind and, me. And they're about, they're about to go, uh, this is the greatest thing I've ever had. Oh, yeah, I've seen that one. <laughs> If I was on a planet where great food, horrible food was great. <laughs> and then, but they, right. they keep doubling they keep it up. Doubling yeah. Yeah. Each time it seems like a compliment, but it's not. And right. every time it seems like it's a criticism, it's actually a compliment. And it goes on and on and on. They are so clever at writing. Casey, okay, so the one that, that you've uh, infected my brain with is, uh, I said, Bee. I said, Bee. <laughs> All right, anyhow, at right. the Ohio right, sorry, sorry, my bad. University, they found that uh, breathing, not venting, works better to soothe anger. You're talking about farting. No, breathing. I'm just venting. No, 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 that, you know, being angry. Oh, uh, yeah. oh. And, and, and getting it all out and screaming and yelling and whatnot. Researchers not, not farting. analyzed data from over 10,000 people and found that deep breathing, mindfulness meditation... Yoga and counting to 10 all worked better than a long chat with your uh, closest friend. So, okay, so this uh, the, the breathing will be more um, beneficial than than venting. And, and I guess venting is also just uh, just unloading right. all, all Not of that. Farting. Right, right. Yeah, the, that information. I've started Not a new farting. process, and uh, it's to do a breathing meditation every time I have uh, uh, finished showering. So you guys, President Steve, shower in the morning. I shower in the afternoon or the evening. And uh, I will. I'll take five to ten minutes and yeah. um, plant my feet down uh, in a sitting position, back upright, and uh, and close my eyes and practice breathing. Here's the thing about venting. Like I've had this in the past year. I've had a lot of things in my personal life that have been overbearing and difficult to deal with, and I've dealt with them. But 
when my close friends want to talk to me about it because they think it's a therapeutic thing to do, which it can be for some people. I don't like to do it, man. Sure. It's just, you're, it's, you're talking. They're, they're, they they are they are trying to. Um, they're, they're lending me allow their shoulder you to vent, and, yeah. and, and it's not something that is effective for you. Once I start venting, right, I start getting worked up. Oh yeah, sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and uh, you know what, Steve? I'd rather ball it up real tight, yeah. and shove Crush it down, it down. Deep inside. <laughs> no, no, no. Just put it under the carpet. That's what happens. You you get. <laughs> but I don't want. It, it's like it's like reliving it on the stand. It's exacerbating you know I mean? uh, the, the yeah. situation. And then yeah. And then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I so my friend and I kind of have an unspoken rule. And when we talk to each other, you know, if there's something going on, okay, what's going on with this? And if she or I say, um, you know, uh, it's it's fine or, you know, it's not really going well. And then that's it. We know. Okay, it that's it. They don't want to talk about it today. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I, 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 I think that is uh, brilliant, Kathy. And the thing to do is if, if the person wants to, they will lead into it. Yeah, yeah. You you, right. you you don't need to be um, you know cross examining them right. to get the information. Uh, you know you're not sweating them uh, <laughs> to find out what's and, and and though a concerned friend might want to do that, let it come from the the person if they feel the need to. Otherwise, they don't want to talk yeah, about and, it. And she knows, and and I know both of us. We know to to let it go. But um, Nick, back to what you were talking about the the breathing and all that. I just read something where uh, it broke down. Um, that actual like taking deep breaths when when you get worked up and how it actually works and that it is actually calming you down. So if yes. you are worked up like that, take when you know you tell a little kid, okay, we're going to take a few deep breaths. Like it, it is actually calming you down or Most calming definitely. the child down. I told yes. you to shut up because you <laughs> try to breathe. <laughs> because you physically are not giving yourself enough uh, oxygen. When you get worked up like that, I mean, you physically don't breathe well enough also, and, and it can calm you down. Just the, the notion of focusing yeah. on something you're doing. Yeah. I assume you might get the same effect were you to focus on farting. <laughs> <laughs> if you could ju just the actual... God knows it's a relief when right. it happens. Exactly. So that would be nice, right? If you could if you could fart at on any... Oh. Uh, at any given uh, moment. Oh, this is Just Breathe. Yeah. This is a great song, by the way. Uh, but, no, I remember with my kids when they were younger and would get and would get fully worked up and be crying or yes. something like that. If you could get them to, to take breathe. a couple of deep breaths, yeah. it made all the difference. So This song, in and of itself, yes. can relax you. Most definitely. Man, yes, Willie Nelson's so version of this song, <laughs> I love. I like Eddie, Ver Eddie, <laughs> Eddie Vedder's <laughs> version. Of Willie, of, of Willie Nelson's version. Eddie does a Willie impression. I'm laughing. Oh, really? Yeah. I just did this the other day. Eddie Tucker Vetti. Claire, Eddie Vetti. <laughs> Betty Edder. I like also, uh, what is it? Um, Edder Vetter? No. Oh. Uh, Eddie, no, Petty Vetter. Petty Vetter. Vetter. Because Eddie's yeah, yeah. last solo record kind of sounded like Tom Petty. Right. Petty yes. I like that. All right, so anyhow, uh, some activities like jogging <laughs> and farting uh -huh. actually rev anger up. This goes against the notion that angry people need to blow off steam. Uh, to reduce anger, it is better to engage in activities that decrease arousal levels. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, you don't want to finish over the boner. Despite with uh, popular wisdom, uh, the, what popular wisdom may suggest, even going for a run is not an effective strategy because it increases arousal levels. However, find out what works you for you. That when I exercise, I, I and I exercise every day, that I feel I feel better and more calm. I will tell you that hiking is very um, relaxing and but, very um, zen-like. But what about when you've got something intense going on in your life? I you mean, growl. Uh, I, I growl. Well, see, growls, yeah, yeah. but, but, um, but I mean, I'm wondering if, uh, if you've ever... I know what you're saying. You know, yeah, no, if you've been you mad, know, I'm like, I, I got to go out and... In the moment. Right. Yeah, yeah no, I don't... Perhaps not. Perhaps but, not. But listen, it might work for some people. So yeah. you just have to you have to find the things what that work works for, for you. you. Yeah. 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 <coughs> Stevie would mention boners. Um, <laughs> so when we'll was the last? Now. When was the last time you think you got an NRB? And and, and, and morning wood does not count. I know morning exactly when it happened oh. for me. <laughs> okay. Um, I was uh, Casey. You've been in the Southwest several times over yeah. the last few years. There's a place called um, Page, Arizona, and. You can go to this Upper Antelope Canyon and Lower Antelope Canyon. <laughs> and that just did it for and, you. No, no, no. no. <laughs> that didn't do it for me, although they were uh, bonerific. You, uh, you have to take, a, like, an SUV to get through the desert to get to the entrance of the canyon. 
And, uh, you know, it's kind of like bouncing over sand. And stuff. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> and I'm sitting on the far right side of the vehicle, and my, my then girlfriend, now fiance, was sitting to my left, and I turned to her, and I was like, Hon, I got on NRB. And I, uh, she's oh, yeah. like, Really? Right now? And I was like, Yeah. yeah. And so I, I had to wait to get out of the vehicle. <laughs> I can't. Like, it was. It was All right, you guys ready to go? I can't have a raging boner. Uh, yeah. I'm going to stay seated for a little bit. Uh, the vehicle made me. Uh, dude, I mean, it's a 10. Well worth the visit, but uh, the little extra was the NRB. I oh. wonder if I am, um, because I haven't gotten one that I, you know, I'm like, do you know what I, I got to think about this. Like, do I miss that? In the shower. Yeah? Yeah. Really? All the time. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. All right, well, since we're talking about boners, let's talk about sperm. All right. Uh, did you know that men have a biological clock? Well, huh. women's biological clock <laughs> is usually the focus of when, uh, when it comes to fertility. A man's age is also... Uh, playing a role. Sperm quality decreases after age 25 in men, according to an analysis of uh, 90 different studies involving... This 90- tastes weird. <laughs> <laughs> this tastes like you got into an onion patch. Uh, so that's from Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, 90,000 participants were in this, so it's a, it's a pretty big study. When the man... In a partnership is over 40, the likelihood of a miscarriage also increases. Mm-hmm. So there may be a male uh, component to miscarriages because of the sperm, oh, sperm quality. Wow, that is sort of interesting. Mm-hmm. So Dr. Scott Lundy said, as we age, the testicles, like any other organ, don't function as well as they used to. They sing. Uh, sperm shape also changes, reducing the chances of successfully fertilizing an egg. Uh, men who are under, <laughs> all right, who are under the illusion that age will have no impact on their fertility health may struggle to conceive further down the line. Another a didn't know that mini derailment here. Have you seen the the commercials now for uh, taking care of your boys? No, uh, which is it's for a grooming uh, device. Okay, and uh, so the and you have to. It takes a while while you're watching it to figure out what's going on. But a guy is standing at a, at a, at a formal event. He's in a suit, and there are two small, like, almost Oompa Loompas that look like him in front of him mm-hmm. that are, have much more hair that are his boys. It's supposed to be his testicles. Right, yeah. and so, and that's the whole campaign. Okay. It's actually fairly clever. I haven't seen that yet. Do you think uh, octogenarians like Robert De Niro and Al Pacino were very surprised when they knocked their girlfriends out? Hell happened. Yeah. Yes. I would think I, so. I, you would think. What the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> that looks like tapioca. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. And what are you doing? Uh, he, he has no idea. I was riding in the back of the vehicle with, with Nick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, here it is, Preston. This commercial's up in the air here. Oh, okay. The screens. Yeah, that looks fun. <laughs> I'll have to watch that. Uh, yeah, I would think that, um, yeah, they were surprised. And in part because of the study, right? Like, you think if you're, even if you're a dude, you reach a certain age. But the, the potency would diminish exactly. after I'm a while. Yeah, I'm too tired. But, yep. I'm too tired. Yeah, so. uh, hi, I'm Pacino's sperm. What's uh? My name's Jimmy. Yeah, what's his nickname <laughs> for his appearance? Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy, and yeah. this is Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, on to the female anatomy uh, Ooh, from yay. the Just Saying Institute. So, <laughs> yeah. um, now this is according to some TikTokers, but they have claimed that Ozempic helps them with their period pain. Huh. Is there anything this drug cannot do? Did you watch any of the two-hour Ozempic commercial that Oprah no. did the other night? Oh, I no, I didn't. I watched about an hour and ten minutes of it. it. I mean, listen, there were a lot of people that, that came down on her because it's pretty overt. But she was taking actual stories of people who have benefited, and she had doctors on who also said there are issues. But, man, it was a love fest for Ozempic. Is she... Does she own part of the company or? No, but no. what she did is okay. she. Um, but it's worked for her. So she brought Weight Watchers on. And yeah. now Weight Watchers includes Ozempic or like drugs okay. as part of the treatment. Oh, so, I thought she like separated from. She, she sold some of her stock, right. I believe, But oh, okay. she had the, the head muckety muck of Weight Watchers sitting right there. Sort of uh, not a mea culpa, but like. Hey, I, this is really what got me to where I wanted to get to, okay. and they took the opportunity to announce that they were incorporating into their system. And I think she did it because she came out and said, "This is what I did. I was on this," and then you know people yeah. were giving her a hard time because she owned Weight Watchers and all that kind of stuff. So she sat down and was like, "All right, let's let's find out what this drug." Well, here's about. the deal: the, the, the timing of this, though, it, it, this this drug in the past year or so has become readily available. 
She tried it out. She struggled with even using a diet program. It hasn't, it's been up and down for her all this time. So why not? Here's the end result. And she talked to a number of people like that. A number of people who have been in, in this situation. People who are in a bad health situation. Yeah. Yeah. Who are having trouble getting, you know. So it does sort of dovetail with the original intent of the drug, which is you you lose the weight. You're, you The diabetes goes away. Um, you're able to be more active. You're able to exercise or do whatever. Mm -hmm. And and the one thing that is said with all of this, yes, find out if it's find out if it's right for you. Right. Uh, and and uh, in many cases, it has been for people. And the more that you have to lose, the more you will lose. And I was actually talking to uh, Doctor Avi Donapel at yes. Iron Mountain Men's yes. Health the other spoken day. Spoken highly of him. Yeah, he's great. And and uh, he had a patient who lost. 101 pounds in 26 weeks. Wow. Now, this patient had that weight to lose, right? Yes. And uh, and they were, um, I think they needed either like a, I think a, a knee replacement or there was some sort of a, because of all of that weight. That, that extra was, weight. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that makes, that would make that surgery yeah. easier to do, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy for the people that this works for, especially those morbidly obese who have a real physical problem that can and, perhaps yeah. so yes everything comes with a cost yep. but you know yeah have you guys seen those lily commercials um sort of discouraging doing it for cosmetic reasons no uh so basically preston that's that's what you're talking about is that um eli lily the pharmaceutical company is saying uh these these drugs are made for obese people people with a, with weight problems um, save the drugs for them. Don't mm. do it because you want to, you know, lose ten pounds. Yeah, but I want to look good too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, let, let me let me tell you. No, it, it, as was observed at the uh, the Academy Awards, uh, Kimmel made the joke. He said this, you know, basically an, an advertisement for Ozempic in this room. It, people even like Scott Disick apparently uh, has been overusing Ozempic and got oh. incredibly gaunt. Oh, yeah, I can't do that. Uh, so I have a cousin who um, she like casually told us that she is on Ozempic. When I tell you she is, maybe she's 105 pounds. No. Wow. And, she is, and, and that's, the I mean, she looked like she was sick. And you know, sick. Oh, well, and she was like, oh, "Bad news for you, you're sick." Well, and she tried to like, you know, she was like, "Oh, well, it's because, um, you know, because they use it for diabetes." And I'm like, "Are you diabetic?" She's like, "No, but I'm pre-diabetic." And well, I'm like, "No, you're no, not." No, 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 no. <laughs> what, what, what it what it can do with some people, and again, you need to talk to your doctor. Uh, is is um is it can reset their system. And the way that they hold food in their bodies, they were sort of explaining it during the Oprah thing. And I don't know, you know, but it seemed legit. I've heard this before. So there are complications that, that can arise with your digestive system if you overuse it or are not using it correctly. So, you know, be aware of that. So some of these, some people on TikTok are saying this is helping with their period pain, Kathy Ozempic is. However, uh, I haven't this, had a period in years. This particular user said when she stopped taking Ozempic, her periods became extremely painful. Uh -huh. uh, she claimed Ozempic helped her with her uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, ovary syndrome. Hmm. Um, and Dr. Myra Ahmed says that uh, an excess of fat tissue can disrupt cycles and increase cramps. Uh, GLP-1 medications and their anti-obesity medications help to reverse that cycle, according to this particular doctor. So, do you, uh, Not to get personal, do you, do, you, do you experience a lot of pain? Yes, I get. You yeah, do? Okay. I get bad pain. I always have my entire life. Um, and yeah, it's sometimes where I can't do anything. Really? So yeah. it's, it's debilitating. Same, same, yeah. same way with Rochelle. Really? Yeah, it's bad. Okay. Um, and she's had issues as long as we've been together, so forever. So if this were something that could work to help her, I'd be all about it. Ask your doctor. But I don't know. You know, this is just a few people on TikTok. Yeah, and TikTok is a reliable source. Yeah, yeah. 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 Come on, Preston. Take two Tide Pods and call me in the morning. <laughs> all right. Um, but that's it, Case I'll find. Oh, you got it. Thank you. Yay. I lost my Just Saying Institute clip from my uh, no. my studies here. So. It's just in local broadcaster Preston Elliott lost his Just Saying Institute pin. But I found it. It was recovered by Casey Foster. And now we can wrap things up. Uh, the Just Saying Institute, home of the new Gary Lauer Scare Scarecrow and Robotics Research Institute. Thank you yep. very much. Oh, wait a minute. Um, oh, no, I thought this uh, was a doctor call. Someone had real sticky, icky, icky. Oh, it's oh. here! Mr. Sticky has arrived. Yeah, hey! 
<laughs> Mr. Stickies. And uh, they are encouraging you because Easter is next week. Uh, it's time to place a pre-order with Mr. Stickies and Pasta. Wait a minute. We just got done talking about Ozempic. Yeah, let me, let me, let me we'll tell you something, man. That's what it's for. Yeah, That's right. So you don't eat three sticky buns. You just eat a half of one or something. Yeah. Uh, award-winning sticky and cinnamon buns. Mr. Stickies, warning, extremely addictive. Why don't we give away a $50 gift card and Celebration yeah. of them being here. So yeah, we'll take uh, caller number 20 at 215 263 WMMR. We are going to take a break. We'll come back in a moment. Uh, some bizarre file stories up next. Preston and Steve. Oh, Metro traffic on 93.3 WMMR. All right, bizarre file. Here we go. Now, bizarre. WMMR. Presents bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre File. Brought to you by Helium Comedy Club, bringing the laughs to Philly for many years. Helium Comedy has the best comics of today and tomorrow. Live every week. Tickets and lineup at heliumcomedy.com. Uh, this is pretty messed up, man. A man died and a woman was injured when they lost control of their vehicle at an off-road adventure park in eastern Kentucky, and it fell off of an 80-foot cliff. 80-foot cliff. Yes. So I probably wouldn't put the off-road adventure park next to an 80-foot cliff. Ah! Or maybe at the bottom of it. That was awesome! Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Crews responded to report that a utility task vehicle crashed at Jeez. Hollywood Off-Road Adventure Park. Uh, the woman called 911 to report that she was trapped in the vehicle and the man had been ejected. Crews from several agencies as well as civilians then began searching for the crash site. Uh, when it was found, they were able to set up multiple rope systems, rescue the woman from the vehicle. The man was pronounced dead at the scene. It's amazing she survived. Yeah, the park says it offers trails in over 2,500 acres of ridges and valleys. There have been a number of stories of people going off cliffs and actually surviving. Yes. Like high cliffs. We've had a few of them lately. Yeah. Uh, out of Washington State, deputies responded to a bizarre behavioral health call over the weekend involving a naked man. Uh, it began when a woman called deputies Saturday night saying that her brother-in-law attacked her, grabbing her three-year-old daughter, mm. and then he ran into the woods, all while naked. While she screamed for help, her neighbor, who was armed with a handgun, fired a warning shot to stop the attack, Jesus. then chased the man as he fled into the woods. Get her, mommy! During the chase... The neighbor shot at the suspect, hitting him in his arm and hand. When the neighbor caught up to the suspect, he was able to pull the child free, but as he ran back to the house, he tripped and fell. As the child continued to run back to the house, the suspect got up with the neighbor and bit him on his leg and stomach. <laughs> I'm going to have a hell of a story to you have a hell of a story to tell on that one. Having run out of bullets, uh, the victim started hitting his attacker with his gun. <laughs> But when the attack continued, he was able to put the suspect in a chokehold, and eventually the suspect released him, and the neighbor ran home. Things are already weird, but they get much weirder when one of the dudes is naked. Yeah. Yep. You're going to have a hell of a story on that one. Uh, when deputies arrived, <laughs> they tended to the victims and called for a canine unit to search for the suspect while waiting for the I don't want any of this. While waiting for the canine to arrive, the suspect walked out of the woods and was taken into custody. That guy's he, naked. He was booked into the county jail on multiple charges. Yeah, well, if you you send a canine, right, after a naked... Oh, chances are. Yeah. <laughs> something gonna, soft is going to get bit. It's going get, to oh. get bloody. Yeah. Uh, the Akron Zoo is investigating what led to a Komodo dragon attack at its facility. Those suckers can be dangerous. Yeah, an incident happened on March 3rd in the Komodo Kingdom employee service area. The Komodo Kingdom. A staff member had injuries from multiple bite wounds inflicted by one of the Komodo dragons named Padar. Uh, the zoo's other Komodo dragon, Jasper, who was not involved in the staff member's injuries, was also hurt and is recovering, the zoo said. So I don't Jasper's know. Jasper's always better with people. How that happened. Uh, the Komodo dragon's uh, Komodo dragon bit um, Sharon Stone's husband. Yep. And caught, he almost had to have his leg amputated. Yeah, he got very, very yeah. sick from it. Uh, so the zoo is working with OSHA in its review of the incident. OSHA found no employer violations or safety standards. Komodo dragons are solitary creatures, and the zoo noted that the two males would be in the habitat separately when it announced the addition of Jasper. Uh, and Komodos use sharp, curved teeth and claws to slash and tear at their prey and also can cause wounds to become septic from venom and bacteria. And they'll take down big animals. Yeah. Like, I've seen them, one take down a deer. Komodo dragons can reach up to 10 feet in length and can weigh up to 300 pounds. 
A traffic stop that led to the discovery of skeletal remains in Mississippi uh, on Thursday. Uh, this took place in, in a town called Natchez, which is interesting because I have a story right after this one that took place in Natchez, Same town. Wow. Mississippi. Uh-huh. Yeah, so uh, the police commander, Jerry Ford, says officers pulled over the driver of a small pickup truck and detained him after seeing drug paraphernalia in the truck. Well, after the driver was detained at the scene, he told officers something spontaneously that immediately got their attention. The suspect, this is according to the police officer, said the suspect at that time stated that he had information about a corpse in the nearby area. Well, thank you for that. So they're just pulling him yeah. over and he says, hey, uh, there's a dead body around here if you want to. I think you're, ch- I saw a dead body. <laughs> uh, they immediately called for backup and uh, the officer said we came out of the wo- uh, came out and actually went off into the woods, maybe 10 feet and discovered, yeah, there was a dead corpse. Ford said that uh, the body had been there for quite some time. Hey, buddy, you're right. And all that was left was the victim's skeleton, but uh, the head was missing from the rest of the body. Uh, He said, we really don't know what to speculate as to what his role was or uh, what he knows or don't know. But uh, that's what it says here. He just says he's seen it. But uh, we're... (laughs) You don't know. I mean, I asked him, but he don't know. We're just basically (laughs) sticking to the facts at this particular time, trying to see where it's going to lead. Uh, Ford says no previous missing person reports have been filed uh, that could have potentially tied to the victim's identity. The remains were sent to the Mississippi State Crab. That's crazy. All right. And then the other story in Natchez, Mississippi. Twofer. An 18-wheeler carrying bees overturned on Sunday night. Yeah, that can get pretty ugly. Uh, The incident happened at 11.30 p.m. The scene was not cleared until 7 a.m. They go sting crazy. Several representatives from the Adi Honey Farms rushed to the site and smoked the area. They have live audio. Bees everywhere! Uh, To help... God, they're huge! They're ripping my flesh off! To help keep the bees relaxed until the hives can be loaded and transported. Uh, the bees were able to stay calm because the hives had been covered in a tarp. We're and it, okay. We're okay. And it was nighttime. Uh, the majority stayed in the vicinity after the wreck and were able to be contained in nearby hives. Uh, the truck driver was not injured in the incident. la di da di da di da Oh, bees! That's <laughs> one of the responding officers. That's still one of my yeah. favorite ones, by the way. <laughs> uh, let's go to one last story. We'll end with this. A couple was arrested Saturday afternoon while having sex on the sidewalk in front of a Popeye's restaurant no! in plain view of passing motorists in Florida. Oh, God. Responding to a, <laughs> responding to a report of <laughs> lewd behavior, a sheriff's deputy located two suspects trysting on a patch of grass trysting. across from the Vero Beach restaurant. Uh, oh, the cop no. spotted Arnold no. Mackey, who is 70, making a thrusting motion while on top of April White, who is 44. When confronted by the deputy, Eric Brashears, the duo began, quote, adjusting their shorts. <laughs> Mackey, the cop noted, appeared flustered and was unable to fully pull his shorts up, which left his unit fully oh, wow. exposed to uh, oncoming traffic. Uh, claiming that he had done, she had done nothing wrong, uh, White reportedly struggled with the cop and called him a derogatory term for homosexual and other obscenities as he, do? he sought to restrain her. White, yeah. who smelled of alcohol, was escorted to the ground where police found four empty bottles of vodka and an unopened bottle of rum. How insulting that you do that in front of a Popeyes. A motorist who called 911 before spotting the duo said that he did a double take because he couldn't believe what he was seeing. He said the witness uh, the witness added that the female had her legs spread open. Oh, my God. <laughs> And the male was doing something with his fingers yeah, at yeah. that point. Oh, yeah. Uh, Finger at, looking good. After wow. That's KFC. I know, oh, but yeah. it's, they have a great chicken sandwich over there at Popeye. After being read his rights, Mackey <laughs> reportedly said that it was uh, not his intention to expose himself and that he asked White to leave the side of the road. He said, but she refused, <laughs> recognizing that uh, he was in plain view of passing motorists. Mackey said that he would apologize to the judge. <laughs> Story's got a lot. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, they were both arrested for exposure of sexual organs, and she was charged with resisting rest and disorderly All right, best fast food restaurant to have sex in front of. Oh, oh come in front on. of? Well, the Playland at McDonald's. Yeah. Is, well, you can start doing in front the of the pit. kids' uh, Playland. I didn't consider that. He's yeah. fun to privacy. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> have some respect. All right. That's what we have in the Bizarre Fire. I'm the you. idiot. All right. Uh, let's do... Not me for asking the question. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's do another uh, Mr. Sticky's <laughs> gift card. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll take some of that real sticky, icky, icky. All right, we'll take caller number 16 at 215-263-WMMR, and we'll set you up Mr. Sticky's award-winning sticky and cinnamon buns and pots down off Heritage Drive. Find them at mrstickysbuns.com. Oh, my God, this stuff is so good. Uh, warning, extremely addictive. I just had yeah. one. Yeah, it's, it's and wonderful. there's a whole bunch of items in there. They're mm. still warm, by yeah. the way. Yeah, they have breakfast sandwiches, too, which are great. So we will take a break. We'll come back in a moment. Stay with us, please. Wow. To do a morning show in the early afternoon. Oh, great. Well, how awesome. Yeah. Uh, so- yeah. <laughs> That's and, the dream, isn't it? And, yes. And that was that was my first time to London. And I know you're you're uh, am I correct in saying you're Irish? We we uh is our first time meeting. Um but yeah. uh it, it, since you are in London, I'll bring it up. I'd never been to London. I just fell in love with that town. Something else. Do you enjoy being in there in, in London? I do. I'm obsessed with it. I came oh. over just before lockdown um to continue my comedy career and uh, so the timing wasn't fantastic because obviously every single comedy club in the world shut but it was a great great place to spend lockdown I love it it's so buzzy there's always stuff to do the transport system which I know sounds like like a ridiculous thing to love about a city but it's insanely good yeah the Irish one not so much quite frustrating so I love it here oh well wait till you get to Philadelphia because ours is not so great compared Uh, to what they have in London really yeah. Oh my God, it's terrible. The, the one on the plus side, though, a lot of Irish uh, here, obviously. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. This is part. Well, of that's the, why I'm going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> part of your your American tour, right? USA uh, tour, and and you had to postpone the dates here. Correct? Was this originally scheduled earlier? I did indeed have to postpone them. You're a very difficult country to get into. <laughs> very difficult. And the visa didn't come through in time, so we had to move it. Were there things in your past that kept that from <laughs> or making that a problem? <laughs> Turns out the criminal record was an issue. Um, <laughs> so you can't you can't be selling heroin in your teens. No, it, just, it, it just didn't come through in time. It was very, very disappointing. But I am I am now legally about to enter you. Well, we appreciate <laughs> that and we're all looped up and ready uh so you (laughs) you're very successful again i was vaguely familiar with you and i'm I'm thrilled to to learn about you doing a little bit of research and and uh uh you had uh, i saw this 62 night tour at dublin's vicar street you sold out so and i've seen you on various shows and it's it's quite phenomenal let me ask you in the in this realm is as they say like cracking the united states or or hitting it in the united states is that all that it used to be is it still a thing is it is it is it um does it matter as intensely as i think it might have used to or is it is it just another notch in the belt that's such a good question because i don't really know to be honest i just enjoy the climb so i don't i like to make things kind of difficult for myself and i've done work in Ireland and the UK and now I want the next challenge. Yeah. I mean, what does it even, I I always think it's so subjective when you think about like making it. I remember speaking to a comedian who I would have thought was incredibly successful and he was telling me how he was disappointed he never made it in inverted commas. And I was like, to me, you have. So, I mean, the chances of cracking America are pretty much slim to none. Mm. Um, But I'd like to just go over and kind of hustle for a little bit over there. Also, the experience, it's so different over there. Like I've done, I did shows in New York last year and um, it's a mostly Irish audience that come to my shows, but I did a couple of the New York clubs. Right. And it is wildly different to gigging in the UK and Ireland. Well, it's you know so what? so different. You know I what? Loved it. I was wondering about that. It's because there's such, now because of the internet and because of YouTube and because of viral, you, you know, you, videos of you and your podcast and so on yeah. and so forth, you, an audience can sort of be pre exposed to you before, you know, it's not like you're, you know, you know what I'm saying? There's right. not that, oh, look at this. No, and it's honestly, it's, um, you can make it kind of from your own sitting room now. Do you yeah, know? Yeah, <laughs> there's, yeah. There's comedians who are like making hilarious videos from their couch. Yeah. And then they're going out to like a sell die tour because all the work is done online, really. Like I in my podcast, the uh, the my therapist ghosted me. That's the only reason I'm able to tour outside of Dublin, really. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask <laughs> you, you know about I mean? that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that because to you me- get into so many ears. You could just get into so many ears. The old school way was just going around, doing shows. Next year, go back, put on an extra hundred tickets an extra, and build it that way. Whereas now, it's 
it's a, you can build yourself much quicker. Yes. You know? Yeah, which yeah. It's great. And it's, it's an amazing thing, and it gives voice to a lot of people who might not otherwise have had the opportunity. You're, uh, and again, uh, just sort of learning about you, but the way you got into comedy, you got in a little bit in your early 30s. Um, you were yes. having a, a bulimia and, and, and uh, anorexia issues, and you were going to therapy. <laughs> I was indeed. Yeah. yeah. And, and just by, in the way life plays out, explain how that ended up getting you into comedy, because it's so crazy. I mean, you you just can't really change anything in your past, can you? Because you don't know where you'd end up. Like it all, it's all just this kind of crazy jigsaw. Basically, yeah, I was completely out of my mind, um, completely insane. I was on what I thought was just a very strict diet where I just regurgitated <laughs> all solids. Turns out that's <laughs> that, like you're yes. like, demented. Right. So eventually I agreed that I wasn't on a detox, that I was completely insane. And I ended up, I had to leave my job and I moved back to my mum's house and I was out of kind of, what would you say, very large crossroads. I didn't know what to do. Recovery just to me meant getting fat. That's yeah. all that meant to yeah. me. I saw no <laughs> purpose outside of like, I was calling treatment. I was calling a fat camp. I was like, I have to go to fat camp today. Wow. I I was just, I, I saw no, I saw no value in anything, only being the thinnest person on the planet. Yeah. Then... I was put in this show at the time, This kind, I'd always liked acting and stuff, but my mum, she'd be quite conservative. Uh, acting is very much not a real job for her. So, you know, nursing, accountancy, that's kind of the buzz. And um, I always kind of like performing. So then a friend of mine put me in this play and then a comedian came to see that. And luckily, and no offence to people involved here, but the, I'd just been broken up with by a bald man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No shame. That's no mean, shame yeah. in the bald yeah. game. No, no thank shame you. In the thank you. I appreciate game. that. No shame in the flash game. But um, <laughs> and I was raging about it because I felt like I'd kind of done him a favour by going out with him. <laughs> <laughs> I can't and argue that. He was, that. Break, yeah, he was breaking that. up with me, oh, and I was like, "This isn't how the world works." Uh, <laughs> a bald guy <laughs> broke up with me. <laughs> with me, yeah. me with a full head of hair, uh, him not a single hair in his head, and I was like, "You think you're Rapunzel here? Like this isn't how this works." Uh -huh. So I was fuming about it, and um, I was telling this story in the show, and then this comedian came to see the show, and he was like, "I think you're kind of doing stand up there." You're yeah. standing up and people are laughing. So why don't you give it a go? And I did. And I mean, now it's... Now there it's you go. I have, I have a question wow. about the ball guy. And I never thought about this until you started discussing this just now, uh, Joanne. Did he shave his pubic hair or did he compensate for his bald head by having like a big, fat, bushy pubic area? <laughs> oh my God. I love American radio, <laughs> breakfast radio. We never get to ask anything like that over here. He was very generously haired. Oh. In the testicle area. Okay. Yeah. See, I don't. I, I don't go that way because I, I, uh, I, um, I like to be shorn. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think it, it also is a, uh, it's a gift to the person you're intimate with to not have them require a machete to get to the edge. Yeah, but I guess if he's pretty bald on top, he needed a bit of big pube energy to make a point. I guess. <laughs> BPE. So I, guess that's what doing. God, I, love I was like, lady. I get your point. I understand your point. I so, groom yourself. Yeah. So your the podcast that you mentioned. Uh, uh, my ther uh, uh, my therapist goes to me. Uh, goes to me. Uh, that happened to you. I explain. It is. Uh, 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 so we talk about therapy a lot on this yeah. show, and I think people are becoming more receptive to the notion that having a third party to have somebody, uh, you know, I've been helped by it. Preston, has, we, we all at some time I think yeah, have had, have I think had this benefit. Have. Um, yeah. So, so explain how you ended up in a situation where the person is supposed to provide you comfort ghosts you. I know. Well, do you know what? I like it, it absolutely happened. And at the time I was because I've been in and out of therapy for years, as we all have. You kind of you go in when you need it and then you come out when you're grand and then something happens. And it's, you know, it teaches a great coping skills. And I had this man um, and he was an ex addict. And sometimes I wonder because I never know what happened to him. <laughs> and sometimes I wonder, did he relapse or something? But he just stopped taking my calls. He stopped replying to my mails. And I was like, I'm not that mental. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I wasn't like, I don't know. Like, it wasn't like I was turning up with hand grenades. And all. I don't know what, I don't know what was going on. But then lockdown happened. And then, so then I, I did mail him and I said, like, are you still working in mental health? Yeah. John. I need to know what yeah. happened. And he said, I am. And then he's like, and here's someone I would recommend for you. And then he sent me someone else. Oh, well, wow, Chris, because the natural inclination okay. of what? someone who is a patient is going to be, I must have put them over the top, right? 
Well, it's of course. You're yeah. like, oh God, I le- I clearly need a team. <laughs> there was, so when one gets sick of me, I can bounce to the next and give the other one time to kind of re- rejig themselves. But you know what? The thing about it is, is therapists are just people too. You don't know what's going on with them. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. terrible. <laughs> you don't know what's going on with them. All right, he, so, he broke up with you too. I mean, yeah, he ghosted yeah. in and then he broke up with you. Joanne, I have a question There's then. A pattern. There is a pattern. There is a pattern. There is a pattern. There is yeah. a pattern, yeah. So I have a question when it comes to therapy because you talk for a living, uh, we talk for a living, and sometimes in my mind, when I'm in the therapist's office, I think what's going on in the therapist's office is not for on-air purposes, right? When you were uh-huh. in therapy, were you was your comedic brain ever clicking in and saying, you know what, this might be good for a bit, this might be something that I talk about, or is that a safe space separate from the stage? Well, it's, I mean, if, listen, not anything for a gag. If I thought that... <laughs> I, that's kind of what I thought. make people laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'd squeeze anything I could out of that. <laughs> but I do remember the last therapist I had, she, she would say something to me and she's like, no, I don't want to see this in the show. So she was, <laughs> so she was very aware that she didn't want herself anything that she had said. Um, so it was more she wanted confidentiality from me rather than the other way around. Yeah, yeah. and that uh, makes sense. Yeah, you know, I, I've always heard, by the way, you should never go to a therapist who doesn't themselves see a therapist. Like in other yes. words, they, they they have to because they are the siphon mm. for all of this coming their way. They need to have that conduit to clear their mental palate. Yeah. Yeah. I used to live with a sexual psychologist, oh. um, which was one of the most interesting people you can ever live with. <laughs> Is that like Those a- stories are- are uh, not appropriate. Like, for like a sex a sex therapist. They they help yes. guide people who are having wow. sexual issues. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So like she worked in a sexual health clinic. So you, you know people who'd had maybe a diagnosis or are having trouble with their partners, all that kind of stuff. But her stories were quality. Well, could, <laughs> but a question she about had that. to go to therapy every week. She was she had to see a psychologist every week because that's what you do. You have to make sure. You're in a position to help this person. Yeah. I got a random text here, by the way, if you're just tuning in. It's uh, Joanne McNally, who's going to be at uh, Helium Comedy Club. It's a rare Monday night show, by the way. Seven o'clock. Yeah. Uh, Somebody texts in and just says uh, simply, I'll bet this chick can fight. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Were you ever a scrapper? Come to the show. In your younger days? the show. Yeah. I'm putting I'm putting a ring in the costume <laughs> room. Just gonna scrap, you, scrap well, each other. You you have so you to learn each other out. You have to learn that you can fight. And I was I was reading an, a, an article about you and talking about that you and even learning your comedy. You had to learn that it, it all doesn't need to be born out of tumult and crisis, and, and that you right <laughs> you, does. right <laughs> does it does does comedy have to come from pain or have you gotten the ability to uh, to say okay here's something that happened with a cup of coffee that was weird. Uh, yeah, it, I think. Well, no, I'm. I'm not the coffee comedy. I'm not the coffee comedy. Right. I wish I was. I yeah. wish I could get an error show out of like, oh, I broke my glasses today. Like, I'm not one of those. <laughs> okay. Mine needs to be sex, death, trauma, <laughs> men. Yeah. That's, right. That's. That's what I love. Like they say comedy is tragedy plus time. My time is about 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> right, right out. Have you ever yeah. re- have you ever regretted because you are known to be candid and, and uh not, not really have a filter, have you ever at any point regretted something that got out that you thought better of after? Well, I wa- I was well now I don't know if I can tell the story. This is live, isn't it? Um, yeah. yeah. I don't know. If you, we'll if you say, if you say, say something be, questionable, yeah. I can I can dump out on Fine. it and, and well, edit so it. Well, so I, the podcast, I, to, I was going out with a, a guy. We just recently broke up and I told a story about us going on holidays and I rode him to sleep. So <laughs> riding is obviously, a, it's kind of an Irish slang word for sex. So yeah. I, was, I, I was having sex with him and I literally rocked him to sleep like a child. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> right. Wow. Which wow. obviously, I was like, Oh my God, I might as well have been singing him a lullaby. He just uh, out completely. Uh, and I tell him that story on the podcast, which, and now that I'm single again, I'm like, I wish that wasn't out there because it makes me sound like I'm shit in the sack and I'm not. Okay. Just for, right. I'm right. actually quite good. Okay. Yeah. When, I, when I bother, when I put my mind to it, I can be lazy as we all can, but that story, I kind of wish I could retract that now. <laughs> well, so you you are, you, you are, you're, you're, you have a career going, obviously. You're, you're an attractive woman. I've, I'm always curious about this. We had Kelsey Cook on the show a little while ago, and and there is a there is a sort of um, a, a groupy element. Do do you have do you have guys who are courting you or coming? No, none of that. I think that I think that I think male. That's more. I think male comics do well out of that. I think female comics. It is. I would say a sexual handicap. Okay. Um, 
it is a block almost. Mm. Oh. Yes. Hey, listen, yeah. I, I would say no, I, no. I would be intimidated by you. Me too. Yeah, yeah I yeah, think. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're beautiful, you're, and and I and I would definitely Thank be attracted you. to you, but I, I would be intimidated <laughs> by your, your sharp wit, uh -huh. your <laughs> intellect. Uh, would be because I know you could kill me with one little <laughs> phrase, probably. <laughs> And I do wear a lot of gold rings. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can hit a bunch. You know how to but fight. I think men, women, like, because I've been laughed into bed by men in the past. Like, women get laughed into bed quite easily. Men, not so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Men, but, not so much. I think that's probably pretty true. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. There, and also, my material, like, no one's going to, no one's going to look at my Instagram page and go, she seems sweet. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's quite hostile. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, to that, comedy is a therapy for you, clearly, then, right? I mean, it's content. Yeah. But the, the, the amazing thing about comedy and doing podcasts, and it's like, it's such a, everything's, you get so much validation about, you get so much feedback that it's a shared experience. Do you know what I mean? Like, you never feel on your own because you can just turn it into something funny and people laugh along with you, hopefully. And then they'll tell you that the same thing happened to them and... There's something lovely about that. Sure. Nice. We were talking earlier about, about uh, obviously, uh, you know, the, the internet and, and YouTube videos and viral stuff going out. A a as you tour, and, and uh, I don't know how many countries you've been to, uh, do, do, you find, um, do you find that you have to alter things? Or has that uh, availability to your material and the commonality of the material, has it made it easier for you to port your material wherever you go? Well, someone said to me the other day, she was an English girl, and she was saying to me that she, because so I was saying I was going to America and she's like, oh, how are you going to do that? Your material's so Irish. And I was like, I don't think it is at all, actually. Yeah. Like, I kind of made a conscious decision at the start to not lean on the Irish thing mm. uh, because I wanted to be able to travel with the material. She thought, it, she thought it was, but of course there's stuff that would work in Ireland. And there's stuff, that's the fun thing about going to America as well. It's a challenge. You're, you'll have to see what works over here. What what can I have fun with over here? <laughs> right. What's the, you know, what are the, what are the hot topics in Philly or wherever, do you know what I mean? Right, yeah, right. Play around with them. But I like to think I'm pretty... Yeah, you are pretty. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joanne, I was, my kind of girl. I was, <laughs> Joanne, I was scrolling through your Instagram account and uh, there's a generic uh, Spirit of Halloween costume, Halloween costume uh, that you posted. And uh, some of them are, you know, sort of uh, typical Pinot Grigio microphone, podcast equipment. And then the last one on there is Mysterious African Pills. And I don't get that joke, <laughs> but I'm sure that there's oh, a joke yeah. therein. <laughs> well, I mean, so I, went, I was in Africa and I love a tablet. A what? So, a tablet. You know, like, a, 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 yeah, like instead of waiting to feel relaxed, if I can just pop that, I will. Oh, I got you. Oh, yeah. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm quite impatient. I'd rather just <laughs> swallow my feelings. <laughs> get have there you, naturally. Have you experimented with stuff? Have you done like the ayahuasca or things like that? No. Yeah. I'd love to do ayahuasca. Have you done it? No, no, no. I've, in fact, I've never oh. been drunk or high in my life. It, uh, I'm an anomaly. Yeah. But uh, you're, you're yeah. coming to America. There's some places <laughs> in here. What do you here. do? <laughs> I, I just envy the people who are. <laughs> wow. I envy you. <laughs> All right. So anyway, you're in Africa and you take this pill. So I'm in, I'm in Africa and I get, I went in and they'll sell you anything in Africa. It's great. It's in the, the chemist. See, America's a bit loose. They're Ireland and the UK. They're very strict here about what you can get over the counter. So I went in anyway and I said, give us a sandwich bag full of uppers and a sandwich bag full of diners. And um, <laughs> <laughs> these tablets. And I've been taking the two together. Anyway, when I got back to Ireland, I decided to Google what one of them was because I didn't know what, what each of them were. Anyway, it turns oh out God. one of them was actually arthritic medication. It wasn't. I thought it was like anti-anxiety. He sold me about 500 euros worth of arthritic medication. Oh my God. Arthritis <laughs> pills. Oh, he saw me coming a mile off. He was uh, like, this is not a local. I can sell her anything. She's not coming back. And um, anyway, then I actually spoke about it online. I was like, am I he, he sold me arthritic medication and then a vet contacted me to say it was actually a, a specific arthritic medication for cats. <laughs> oh my God, seriously? <laughs> yeah. Now isn't, isn't ketamine, isn't, there's one drug Oxy. that, Oxy, is Oxy that it? Horses. Okay, there, there's, horses. there's yeah. a drug that is, that was used primarily for cats or for horses or whatever that is used um, to get high. Yeah, that was like special K. Cat. Special K, that's yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ketamine, yeah. 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 Apparently, they, use, they advise it now for couples therapy and stuff. Really? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, I know. So, <laughs> well, wow. you, you have a, a lot of adventure here in the states. You know, you've you've been before though. Yes, is this your? I have. Yeah, I've been before. Yeah, I've been a couple of times. I was in uh, Las Vegas there recently to see you too, which was fab. Oh, at the oh. Sphere. Sphere, do tell. Yeah. Oh. What was your impression of that? It was amazing. Yeah, it was absolutely amazing. I was actually, you know, your man David Grell from Foo Fighters. Sure. Yes. He was in. I didn't realize, but he was below me. Like oh, in, yeah. you were the final show. There's a there's a video. Yeah, of the him. final show. Yeah, really yeah. enjoying himself. Yeah, so you're. Right I am the him. girl. I am the girl above him, who's going out of her mind. <laughs> I was accidentally captured above him. Really? Oh, we're gonna we're gonna watch that because we watched that video countless times. Yeah. One, one, I think it was the. I look touched. The, <laughs> you look like you're having a good time. Money. The Daily Mail like point there, he goes, it, like it was hilarious <laughs> and he was acting crazy. Grohl was rocking out. He was enjoying the show, you know? They, yeah, they were yeah. Kind of, well, were... I was certainly I was certainly enjoying myself above him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would imagine Dave would have gotten some of the best seats in the house, so yours must have been pretty phenomenal if you were right up amongst we, there. We, we did. We got good seats. We did. We were very good to ourselves. We got wow. good seats. Any <laughs> connection being, I know everybody from Ireland knows uh, Bono and you too. No, but any connection to that band? Have you ever uh, met well, them? We, he, so Bono lives down the road. My mum's, my original family home is up the road from his. Wow. So we, I, used to, I used to serve him in the pub and stuff. Yeah. Oh, cool. Wow. Hey, what was your, uh, yeah. what was your impression of Las Vegas, the city? Oh my God. It's, it's, I lost days, years. I, I, don't, I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. I was just being rolled back onto the plane. And I, that, that sounds that's right. That's how it works. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm, I don't even know what month day it is. <laughs> it was just, it was, and I'm such, I'm such a, I'm so glad I'm not a gambler. I lost $20 and I was like, that's it. I'm, I'm not touching those slots again. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. Good for you. That's because the same, uh, that's the same when I went. I was, I, you know, maybe played like 40 bucks, lost. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I no. lost all sense of time. I went to the airport early because I couldn't wait to get out of there. I needed to like get back to life. No, it's true. Jo Joey and I had, yeah. I, I went out there years ago with a friend who found out quickly that he could instantly become addicted to gambling. I had to wrestle his ATM card away from him. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And it was, it was, it was bad. Do you know how much arthritis medication you can buy? <laughs> <with 20 laughs> I, I I'm wanted, very nimble. I'm I very nimble. I wanted to <laughs> ask you, um, <clears throat> you talked about being single and did you get kicked off of uh, uh, the, the Raya, the, 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 uh, the celebrity? <gasps> The celebrity yeah. uh, dating yeah. site. Well, it was uh, so basically, you're not allowed screenshot on Raya, which is it's just Raya. Like celebrity yeah. date Raya. Now I shouldn't have been on it in the first place. I mean, if you want to feel bad about yourself, go on a celebrity date now. <laughs> you're like, I'd rather just stay in the normal ones. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, sit, I think there's like people like. Well, who was on the bit? Who was on Raya? Like Lily Allen and so, like it's just really? it's but too high end. Ben really. Affleck was on too it for a while. End. Yeah. Ben Affleck was on it. I mean, what am I going to be doing there? Do you know? <laughs> hey, Ben. Like, what am I going to slip into Ben Affleck's DMs? I'd say he's Grant, but... Yeah. Lewis, Lewis Hamilton was on it. So okay. basically, this is how you know you shouldn't be on Raya, because you're screen grabbing all the celebrities, sending them to your mates. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Don't belong. Right. I was very much a tourist. And um, I screen uh, screenshotted enough of them that they took the account back. Oh, wow. No. So now, they... You're back? I'm back on it now. I'm back oh, on it, uh, yeah. Have, yeah, you, yeah. have you had any celebrity nibbles that, that you could relay or? Not nah. a single bite. Wow. That's surprising. I think what we've learned in this interview is we need to set you up with somebody when you come here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what about a, a lad from Philadelphia? Why not? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> You know uh, what I mean? Well, well, would sorry. you prefer to date an American, uh, an Irishman living in America in Philadelphia? Anyone with the visa, I am not queuing in that embassy again. I'm not going to do that again. So I hope yeah. to come home with a husband. At America. Yeah. <laughs> Rule visa. one. It's legal. Must have a visa. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just wow. have a visa. That's all he needs. Doesn't, That's need, doesn't need hair. He's be a unit. I don't care. Yeah. You don't want to get burned again. Yeah. I'm All not right. queuing in the rain for two hours again to get an American visa. I'm not doing it. All right. Well, uh, Joanne is going to be at Helium on Monday. There's a uh, 7 p.m. show, and hopefully you'll have a great time in Philadelphia. Come back around and thank then you. maybe visit us in person next time. We'd love to have you in our studio. I'd love that. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Joanne McNally, guys, yeah. take care. Yeah. See you, Joanne. Have a good time in Philly. Oh, Very man. Sweet. I love her. So yeah. do I. Yeah. She was and by the way, she sounded like, uh, for a second there, she said, that's all I need. Yeah, thanks for nothing. <laughs> thanks for nothing. <laughs> yeah. That sounds right out of uh, Caddyshack. Caddyshack. Yeah. When are you leaving Chicago? Thanks for Norton.
Uh, when am I leaving? On Saturday. Why? Okay. No, I can't no, go no. To show. no, uh, no, 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 no. Because she's playing in Chicago right after Philadelphia. Oh. oh. Yeah. Um, bu- 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 uh, Looks like 27th, Wednesday night. 27th. Uh, now I'll be I'll be gone by then. I'm doing a two part trip. I'm going to Chicago for a couple days, and I'm going to go back to the Econo Lodge. Mer- <laughs> no, I am not. <laughs> We're no? going the opposite direction for this <laughs> okay. trip. I made uh, I made uh, uh, reservations at a very nice hotel. You know my, my stand, son. Get the best hotel you can get because if where you are it, it, the weather stinks or it's yes. not you, you're, at least you'll have something. And the weather is going to stink. The high when I leave the high temperature in yeah. Chicago is 35 <sighs> degrees. <laughs> but I'm lucky because my son is a bit of a homebody and yeah. if, I, if I say hey why don't we just hang out in the hotel he's like no oh, okay. All so right. we'll do that and we're actually bringing board games with us. <laughs> oh nice. <laughs> so just in case we do get stuck indoors and okay. we'll, we'll have a view of the city so yes. it's going it's to be really really nice. Uh, real quick a thank you uh, a gentleman by the name of Jerry Torres stopped by and made some custom Preston and Steve shirts for us. And it says, uh, I'm going to hold up to the camera here. It says, Preston and Steve, they're so fart. Uh, 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 yeah, Thank I you. love that. And uh, Jerry does a podcast, so you can look him up. Jerry Torres is a very funny guy, very nice guy. And stand-up a big, big, comedy as well. Yep, stand-up comedy is a very big fan of the show. So thank you, hey, Jerry, for bringing see, that by. Maybe go see Joanne on Monday night, Jerry. And- yeah, yeah, she's awesome. You got a nice head of hair. I, uh, I, I very much fell in love with her. She's yeah. very funny and uh, and cute and sassy yeah. and all that stuff. I love it. Uh, Nick found a little tidbit of information that I did not know. An anniversary of sorts today, twenty years ago, they imploded Veterans Stadium. Yeah. Wow. So Kathy, that means it was twenty years ago today that I saw that guy's wiener. Uh, remember, we were talking about celebrity wieners. <laughs> Oh, yeah, wait, and who's, who did you say? I don't want to say it out loud. Uh, um, I, what? <laughs> wait, I've, what, I when we were at dinner? We, yeah, we were at dinner, we were talking yes, about, because you had seen somebody. Chris Weber. Oh, you saw Chris Weber's, and oh. I was, um, okay. I was I smoking a J with somebody in a, in a hotel bathroom, and they just started going to the bathroom, and I was like, what are you doing? Like, we were just standing here, and uh, and so. And you saw. And I saw it, and so that was 20 years ago to this day. Wow. A local celebrity? A local celebrity, yeah. Do, do, are they still a local celebrity? Well, I mean, yeah, if you knew this person back then, then you know this person now. Did okay. they wear a bow tie and talk about the weather? <laughs> <laughs> I, I am like completely blank. I forget I don't, who you I can't, said. I'm, I'm not even it. going to. Just um, hold it up to the YouTube yeah. camera. Well, that's what I was going to say. I'm not even going to mime uh, what this person did for a living. All right. Oh, because just, uh, just give us. You have sport. another celebrity dong story uh, case. I do. I do. Yeah, yeah, when you walked into the Flyers locker room one time. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Who is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, that one was Michael Layton. Yeah, I will say that because that was a locker room. Thing. Did the charade out of camera I'm, shot so I can see it? Go okay. step over there. Uh, so over what here. was it? Um, uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. Right, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, yeah. I do remember yeah. that. Thank you, Casey. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Back to the vet, real quick. <laughs> yes. There's back an, from uh, penises to the, <laughs> yeah. From, well, there's a lot of penises in the vet. Uh, Stuck in the middle with you. Um, there's an article on Philly Mag that just came out today. It's by our buddy Victor Fiorillo, and uh, I've not read all of it yet, but it's it's 20 years after the vet, and it really is a, like a, a retrospective about Veteran Stadium. Uh, the, I, I didn't realize um, that the vet was only around for 33 or 34 years. It was mm. not a long lasting stadium. It was built, I think, uh, um, and opened in 1972. And I know some people have fond memories of it. Uh, I don't. I, I thought it was oh, a hole. Really? It was, was, was it as as uncomfortable having yes. never been? I don't like the link. I'll, I'll tell you what. I do. I, Citizens Bank Park is awesome. I do not like the link. I think the the seats are smaller. Um, you're you're closer to the field. Your bird's eye view is better. But I just feel like the 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 the, the link just doesn't have a doesn't okay, have a personality well, well, c- compared to the vet. Compared to the vet. So and also I can't help but not romanticize about the vet because the vet was my childhood and also you got to remember that when you uh, watch sports on television you know the, the the clarity of the picture wasn't that great yeah. so, but when you got to the vet and you like walked up the, yeah. the steps or really the, the ramp and you saw the field for the first time you're like oh it's so green yeah, yeah. so that stadium was of a time because um, Bush Stadium in St. Louis where I grew up was very similar in its shape yeah, yeah there in, were, in, in, in the look those were popular there were four that were made the vet a bush stadium uh riverfront in cincinnati and three rivers in in pittsburgh and they were all designed essentially by the same firm to okay. be okay bo- nick be was baseball was, and football stadiums. was shea designed no shea, shea was designed by a bunch of gremlins who lived in new york city and they <laughs> wanted to build the crappiest stadium they could uh, well they succeeded i'll tell you this though um it looks similar to um you know no it doesn't look like shea at all 
No, I, I, the I, vet does not. No, the vet was a, a concrete dome, and or I mean a concrete um, circle, and Shea had uh, open outfield. Um, so th- those two stadiums were very, very different. Okay, so it had it had uh, breaks in where the outfield was. The vet did not. No, not the Shea, vet. Shea oh, did. you're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, but uh, when I when I moved here and for the first time, the vet was still around. I went to a few games there, uh, but it did remind me of Bush Stadium. But I found it to be. In lesser condition than Bush Stadium. Yeah, that's was. a good a good assessment. So it was a similar style building, but I just didn't like the whatever it was about it. I didn't like the Shea layout. Shea Stadium was 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 horrible. At one point with the vet, um, uh, there was consideration pressed in that they were going to put down grass uh, because the turf was so bad and caused so many injuries. And there are links to uh, several Phillies players who got geoblastoma, um, who died of brain cancer because wow. of playing. Well, it would get up to routinely. This is not a, an exaggeration. Routinely 140 degrees on the surface in the in the summertime, and often up to 160 degrees. And when that that stuff was superheated, um, it was it could be toxic. And so um, the the John the, Vukovic the uh, turf, yeah, the turf. <laughs> there's whatever. a whole backstory, carpet, whatever you want to. No, call no, no. It. There's yeah. a whole backstory on how awful that turf is. Also, it's not biodegradable. So no. uh, there are like some burial areas in Pennsylvania where it's been disposed. I mean, it, there are horror stories linked. Uh, to the turf at the vet, especially for baseball. Less so for the Eagles, because the Eagles only played eight games there in a regular season, and they played in mostly colder months. Right, and you guys uh, remember when I got uh, detained at the vet That's jail? Right. Yes, vet yeah, we jail. sent you in with a the, 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 the with a clipboard. The, the, the <laughs> a lab coat and a clipboard. Yeah, yeah that if you, were, you, looked at, you looked authoritative, they did let you onto the field. Oh, yeah. They just, next turf, right? I, yeah. yeah. I thought you were detained for a, a drunken thing one time there. No, 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 that was at the link. That was, that the, was link. the link. Yeah. I'm sorry, excuse me. You were at link jail. <laughs> Was on I'm the, sorry, uh, I'm getting yeah. your arrests yeah, yeah. mixed up. Remember we had... Never arrested! The, the, the robotic, ro- you had a, a robotic sheep. I, I designed a graphic that we're supposed yeah. to tend to the yeah. artificial... Yeah. Uh, I rem- there was a... Uh, oh, real quick. Uh, flashing back to the famous person you saw naked, Casey. Somebody texts in and says... Does Michael Barkan's penis also wear funny glasses? <laughs> <laughs> no, I would I would never know. It wasn't Barkan. Yeah. Uh, but... Yeah, it was. Uh, it, its time had been way past. It should have been yeah. gotten rid of before it was. Uh, here's what I think about our differing opinions a little bit on on the vet, Casey. Is that you, you're more of an Eagles fan, and I was more of a Phillies fan. Ah. And so for for football, it wasn't awful. Um, you could go for games. It, it felt a little more familial. You could walk all around the 700 level. Yeah. So you could go see people in other sections. If you would go to a, a Phillies game, especially in the heat of summer, you, like you, we used to joke that you would never have to memorize what your seat was because as soon as you sat down, the heat from the seat would radiate into your back and you, the number would be imprinted into your skin. I mean, like that's how awful that's it was. That's how impressive it was. Yeah, and there's just, Steve, there was zero breeze. It just And, and yeah. the, the carpet, the turf, radiated the heat back up. So, huh. so like, uh, for example, having never been to the vet, and, and I think the Goldbergs has depicted it a number of times, and they, I know for a fact they have, uh, was there was there bench seating at any point in the stadium? No, I, well, I mean, I just remember there being seats. Okay, um, seat seats, okay. Seat, we seats. had, uh, at, at Bush, just in the outfield, were, were benches. Okay. And, and those were fun to yeah. sit in. There were but, benches at the vet way, way, way up, in the 700 okay. level. All so right. if you get to the to the top level, and then I mm. think, Steve, eventually they got rid of them because they realized they could sell seats. Yeah, uh, makes sense. But they put in super boxes at one point around the top. They were the highest portion yeah. of the stadium that you could get to. And so they were like nice suites, but it was an effort, an effort to make some money off of a, a already dilapidated building. Somebody had texted in and asked, what was your favorite concession at the uh, at the vet? Does any ring a bell? I, I wouldn't hot know. Hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just hot dogs. Uh, hot dogs, maybe peanuts. I don't know. Okay. Nothing Cracker special. Jacks. Did yeah. you ever care if you ever went back? Never care. <laughs> but like, you know, now, I mean, it was just... Pretty standard stadium food, right? Uh, and like, but now you go to any of the stadiums, and, oh. and there, there's a lot of specialty uh, hey, you got items. Vegan, yeah. you, can, you can find pretty much what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Casey, do you remember having to go to the bathroom in the 700 level of the vet? What you had to do? Mm-hmm. Trough? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, uh, because of the way that the seats were lined up and the, the height of the stadium at that point, you literally, oh, when geez. you were standing at a urinal, you had to duck uh. because the the seats were uh, the <laughs> oh urinals were right underneath the seats, so you had to bend your head down in order to sit, to fit underneath it so you could pee. God, some of those buildings, like, I, I remember at the Spectrum, what it was, I think it was, no, I actually had had this happen one time before, but I got limited uh, view oh. seating <laughs> where a pillar is yeah. in your yeah. way, yeah. and was it's it, like, was it Fenway? What? 
No, no. There was, I think it was at the Spectrum. There okay. was, there were some, yes. a couple of little spots. There were. Yeah. Where if you ended up, you got a limited view. And yes, I did have a limited view at Fenway too, because yeah. we bribed to get in. I didn't have, actually have seats. But it's a, it's a structural pole in front of you that yes. if they were to remove it, the stadium would collapse. So yeah. for, for, again, um, for a limited um, view seat, you play for, pay full price, or is it a reduced price? I don't oh, remember. No, probably no, it's, probably it's, less. Yeah, it's less. But then also at the vet, um, I, my, I had friends who they, they would go to games and not have tickets at all because there was always somebody like at the lower level who was you know yeah oh you know, give me twenty bucks and I'll let you in type of guy <laughs> yeah I don't God, know I don't know that. if the link or, or Citizens Bank has that but, yeah yeah uh, but the vet sure did hang on a second I'll go to Brian's got a comment real quick hey Brian good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. How you guys doing today? Good. What's up, bud? Hey, so um, about, uh, I guess about nine years ago, maybe maybe ten, um, I don't know if you guys are, uh, know the bell that sits out in front of Citizen Bank Park now, yeah. um, right by the beer garden. Sure. That used to be the bell that was on top of Veterans Stadium, right? Um, and what ha the story goes that basically after they were tearing it, after they imploded it, um, they basically were just, you know, getting rid of stuff. They said to the iron workers, like, hey, you know, get just trash that thing. Well, one of the iron workers, I guess, took it and put it in his barn for like, you know, like 15, 20 years until John Middleton somehow found out about it um, and wanted to redo it, which he's done. And it looks gorgeous out there in front of, you know, CBP. Well, I was actually working. I was actually the foreman running a, a sandblast company called Ameriblast out of Levittown. And uh, we actually sandblasted that thing, you know, to oh, prepare it for yeah. You know what it looks like now. Clean it up. It's really cool. I got pictures, and you know, I'm really kind of proud to have been, you know, been a part of that. Sure, that's, that's, that's itself is killer. I that's pretty it. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Good for you. We know Brian. the guy who grabbed the uh, the, the spectrum and the uh, Billy Spectrum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And we signed it. Yeah. 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 Any, does anybody? Because I do have a piece of the vet. Anybody have no, a any you of get? I just a piece of cinder block. Okay. I wasn't willing to pay you get for a like seat, the right? seats and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. I have a brick. I have a brick from the spectrum, but I don't have anything oh. from the vet. I had a brick in front of the Wells Fargo Center, but they didn't tell anybody. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah. 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 That's right. So Where 20 years, is. 20 years ago yesterday, I was leaving a uh, Philadelphia Wings game. I was with my wife, uh, who, let me th do the math real quick, was not my wife at the time, and, and a bunch of friends. And then Matt Cord called. And he's like, dude, I have an extra room. At you want to see a celebrity you penis? See, <laughs> see a celebrity <laughs> wiener. Uh, but that I'm not using at the Holiday Inn if you want to stay overnight and watch the vet explode the next yeah. morning. So we did. And we tried our hardest to stay up all <laughs> night long. And I think we made it to like five or six. Five, close to six o'clock in the morning, and then we all passed out. Luckily, I don't know, maybe it was my wife woke us all up because I mean, we w we went hard all night. Long. Oh, so you just wanted to stay up and party all night? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, why were you staying up all night? Penis party. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did they did they blow it up early in the morning? It was early. I want to say it was like somewhere between six and eight a.m. I want to say it oh, was wow. in the seven o'clock hour. But I remember like so we we left. Um, we left the Wings game, and then we went to go find beer somewhere. And then as we're walking into the Holiday Inn, they're like, oh, you can't bring that in here with you. The, uh, right. The beer. I remember this story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, are you, I'm like, I'm 25 years old. Like, yeah. they can bring it. And they're like, no, you can't do that. And I was like, oh, okay, well, hang on a second. And then I called another Holiday Inn in the city. <laughs> and I was like, hey, we're coming in right now, and we've got beer. Is that okay? And they're like, as long as you're 21. I said, hang on one second. I handed the phone to the manager. <laughs> I'm like, tell this person. And then they let us in. Uh, they were so really, nice. yeah. All right, good yeah. call on your part. We're watching the video of the uh, detonation. Casey, how cool was it? Was it cool to see it, or was it, it was, really a little bittersweet? Or no, was I it, think I thought it was well at that. I time, mean, it was done. At so. that time, I was so excited for the link. Um, yeah. So I thought it was cool, and I was uh, even cooler that I was able to see it in person. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, man, uh, I was and, also not feeling all that great either. And so, so you don't like the link. I'm not a big fan of it. Okay. It's it's not that I hate it. It's just I, I don't go enough to really have much of an opinion on it. I've only been to like two games. concerts. And, and, and how do you feel I about did, it for I, concerts? I did go. To, I've only been to one. I, yeah. I saw you two there, and um, it was okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean the show was great, but I mean as far as the venue, I wasn't blown away. Oh yeah, I was there for that show. By it too. And, and you yeah. said I, you I had think... trouble with the with the was it GNR you were there for? Oh yeah, gun, mm -hmm. a lot of the the audio, audio there is is not great. You have to be in a spot or find a spot to right. to hear you know for the audio to sound good. But case, I'll, I'll, I think a lot of people I've had conversations with a lot of people that don't like the link at all. I huh. my seats I'm up in the 200 level and my seats are pretty close to the the end zone seats. I can't get there. 
I have to go down and yeah. around. Like it's yes. it's not connected, right. and it's and it's ridiculous. So for me to try to get to like from one side of the field to the other, if you're not on the lower level, it's just. It, it doesn't, you can't do it. I saw Coldplay there a few years ago and we sat up high and that actually, that was the best concert I've ever seen at the Link because it had a really good video display. I heard the Metallica show at the Link was really, really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Preston, for that U2 show, I was down on the floor and yeah. I think that was Joshua Tree Tour, right? Yep. And I thought, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to be down on the floor. It was not great at all. They, oh. And I know these are first world problems or whatever. But uh, it's, it was hard to see the stage. Um, you're standing the entire time. Right. And it was just, it wasn't um, very, it was not at all intimate. There was very little charm to the link. And it didn't, I sat like off to the side. So probably where you were on the floor, Nick, I was just a few rows up, like two or three rows up. It sounded terrible. It was almost like it wasn't a good concert because it, the sound was awful. Now I've seen the stadium show at uh, Citizens Bank Park. I really like that. It's better mm -hmm. there. Yeah. yeah. But okay. but watching football, I mean the the way you know the uh, the, the grade of the seats like. Uh uh, there's really not a bad seat in the house. Like I said, I'm in the 200 level, yeah, yeah. and I I think the views of the field are awesome, but that uh, there's just something about the, everything else. And I'm like, that's eh, it's all right. Random text about someone seeing something at the vet. Uh, and this says, my ex saw Bismarcky chucking up Wiz <laughs> in a full length fur coat in the 700 level bathroom. Oh my God. <laughs> The you other th win. Yeah. <laughs> the other th thing is, Steve, when you go into the men's room, at least where I'm at in the, in the 200 level at the link, there are there are urinals that are situated like on this corner yeah. where like you're just like when you're walking in, like you're in full, you full view of, hey. of somebody going to the bathroom. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, here is a call we're going to go to. Lorraine says that she was, and I quote, a hot pants girl at yes. the vet yes. in the 70s. What were the hot pants girls? They were, they were promotional girls. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let me go to it. Let me get a Lorraine then. Hi, Lorraine. Good morning. I am here. All right, Lorraine, this is in the 1970s? 1979, they initiated the hot pants girl. <laughs> it was uh, when the fanatic was born, okay. basically. Yeah. All right, so um, do the math. I'm... Um, not, you know, 19 anymore. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, but you no. have a hot pants curl kind of name, though, Lorraine. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, wow. Okay, I never thought about that. Uh, but, no, they, they dubbed us the hot pants girls because it was the first time we wore short shorts, yep. okay? Mm -hmm. um, my initiation of trying to get the job was walking in front of Paul Owen. Yes, yes. Okay. He was the president of the team. Oh, e easy, Casey. So no, that's in. Nick. Yeah, uh, you, you got hired by Paul Owens. So yeah, and you know how I walk. He said, "Walk in front of me, turn around, and walk back." And I did. I thought, well, this is the weirdest wow. interview I've ever been on. It was a different and, time. Um, I drove home. I got a call. I, I'm like, I got the job. And I thought that is not as sexist as I thought it. <laughs> 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 Back in the day. <laughs> Back in the day. Um, Lorraine, quick, no, you're quick right. question. Did you work for just one season? I worked for uh, a couple of seasons. Preston, let me tell you this. Uh, let's talk about um, history. Okay. It cost me 50 cents to go across the Walt Whitman Bridge because I live in Jersey. Okay. Uh, I got $17.50 a game. Wow. And uh, barely a dollar tip if I shook my hiney <laughs> and wiped somebody's seat off with my mitt. Okay, so so you were almost kind of like ushers uh, for yeah, the, the... Yeah, okay. we were ushers, and we were dispersed. You know, there was the old ushers that had been there forever, and they had, you know, they 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 couldn't lose their job. Right. right. But then they put the usherette. They, they called us usherette. Usherettes. Yeah. yeah. The hot pants girls. Yeah. Most people called us hot pants girls. Thigh high boots, blah, blah, blah. And actually, I still have my outfit. And <laughs> Send us a picture of you, if you could, in, 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 your, in your heyday. That, I, I, President, I, you know, it's, I'm, for some reason, I'm thinking of, like, you know, the reunions. Are there other hot pants girls that you've kept in touch with? Uh, we, we've lost touch. I went to a few weddings. And as a matter of fact, uh, a, a few years ago when they were having, um, uh, they were 
whatever they were doing with the Phillies. And I, I emailed them and said, hey, why don't we have an Usherette reunion? Like, oh, it's not about the Usherettes. It's about the players. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I got a little turned off by that. Oh, no, no. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh, this it, needs it, to it, happen. It, yeah, it needs to happen. Lorraine, how do you look back on that? Do you look back on it fondly? I do, Preston. I, um, it was quite an experience. Like, there's a, you know, when you work in a section and, there's drunks coming up and down. Oh, and by the way, may I add, after two seasons, I never got close to a foul ball. I mean, I came never. Out of problems. Wow. It, wow. I mean, what's the what's the ratio of, of, <laughs> yeah. of that? Hey, yeah. Lorraine, so the, those early 70s Phillies teams were, were fairly awful, right? And then 76, 77, 78, they made the playoffs. Um, we but, did. We but I wanted to ask you because I, I read that um, the Hot Pants girls really helped to boost attendance for bad teams. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure about that, uh, Nick, but um, <laughs> uh, we were there as, you know, eye candy, I suppose. Yeah, and yeah. you asked about, you know, the best food there. There was no good food there. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all you smelled was those stupid little propane carts that would drive by delivering hot dogs to uh -huh. the concession stand. Yeah. And it was, it, the fumes were disgusting. So, you know, there was uh -huh. really no good food. So just, oh, my God. But, but, but nothing but fond memories? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, 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 kind of. Lorraine, I love it. Thank you for sharing that. That's so awesome. We appreciate oh, thanks it. Thanks for having me, guys. You I mean, bet. I kept. Li I've been listening to your. And I'm, should I call him? Should I not? And then I'm like. <laughs> I have to because there's there's got to well, be a hot you, pants girl yeah, out there. Yeah, you know what? Hang on, hang, hang on, Lorraine, Lorraine, stay right there because I'm going to get another call. You may know this gal's mother. Maybe I'm going to go to uh, Jen. Her mom was a hot pants girl. Hi, Jen. Good morning. Hey, okay. good morning. How are you? Good. All right, Lorraine's still on the line too. Jen, what's your mom's name? My mom's name was Linny. Linny. Jen, Lorraine, and does that ring a bell? Ooh, there was a lot of us. Uh, what year? She was she in work? the um, late 70s, early 80s. Oh, yeah. Then I probably worked with her, yeah. She but had, I don't... Had, um, I'm, try, I'm, I'm trying to get her to send me a picture. Mm -hmm. um, she had like a very unique red hair, like a, in a bob. She always wore a hair in a bob. I would love that this. I think this needs to happen. Yeah. I don't even know, but I love things like this. Me too. I, I love things that. that reunion. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, it clearly it, it, it was part of the complexion of of the experience of going to the vet. It, yeah. To me, it makes it, it, it. You know, I keep thinking of the, of the last scene in uh, the League of Their Own, Preston, where they you know they get together and it's yeah. that sort of thing. And yeah. you guys, you guys had uh, uh, Nick said you helped keep the stadium afloat by providing something to incentivize people to go see a cruddy. A team, so yep. yeah. And Steve, at seven dollars, seventeen dollars and fifty cents a night. I mean, that's a pretty good deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. Lorraine, I'm gonna let you go, but I'm gonna talk to Jen for just a minute. But thank you so much for your call, Lorraine. Thank you. It was All a right. pleasure, guys. All right, Love take care. Listening. Love you. Oh, thank you. you. All right, Jen. Um, does your mom? What, what does your mom tell you stories uh, about uh, from those well, days? I, I grew up at the vet. I used to uh, watch the Phillies game with Troy Brown, Ollie Brown's son, in the dugout. Wow. While my mom worked. And I used to run notes back and forth from, like, Tommy Hunton and Jay Johnstone, like, all the old players. And they would write my mom a note, and I would run it up wherever she was working, and then she would write them a note and run it down. And, what was uh, in these notes that were being exchanged back and forth? Who knows? Love <laughs> notes, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> who knows? Those crazy hot pants girls. But the, one of the girls at the that works for Citizens Park has to always stayed with the organization. She runs the alumni. I don't and, know why. And she was one of the hot pants girls? To. Yeah, she was oh. a hot pants girl. I don't okay. wanna I don't wanna call her out on you know. I, I, got I think this don't you think something like this needs to happen? Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would send her a note today and say, Listen, <laughs> you've got to go back and listen to MMR today and <laughs> Totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you, yeah. Jim. We appreciate it. I'm going to forward a picture as soon as I get. Yeah, we'd love to do. see it. We'd love and to yeah, see it. Picture back then and now, if you can. We'd love to see it. Oh, Thanks, John. Oh gosh. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's awesome. <laughs> awesome. So, see Preston, um, the gentleman who hired uh, that the hot pants was Paul Owens. Paul Owens. Uh, we we heard a story about him last week. There's that section at uh, uh, Bay Care Ballpark where the larger gentlemen were sitting upstairs. Yes. What was that called? The Whale, the, whale uh, Beach. Yeah, Whale, whale Beach. Beach. Yes. Yeah. So Paul Owens uh, nicknamed uh, the heavier beat writers 
a bunch of whales because they were <laughs> fat guys. And okay. so that's the same. And mm. Paul Owens died 20 years ago. He actually, Paul Owens died um, right after the vet was imploded. And wow. he hired Lorraine by having her yeah. walk to and from him. It's the same way we interviewed Kathy. Absolutely. That's right. Walk around. Oh, spin around. God. It was a different time, yeah. Kath. Listen, I not that long ago, after uh, our last caller, when I also worked for a sports team, there was, uh, I remember somebody uh, not, wa- they wanted to get rid of someone uh, because the person in charge didn't like the way she looked. Um, and I remember yeah. them telling me, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah. good luck with that. All right, well, interesting calls. Thank you so much. Uh, we do have to take a break. We'll come back in a moment, but it was 20 years ago today that uh, the vet was imploded. So Amazing. Interesting little moment in history. Coming back with B-File Story. Stay there. That's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. Now, bizarre. WMMR presents bizarre. Kristen and Steve's bizarre. bizarre File. And this morning it is brought to you by The Bagster. Mm-hmm. You can buy yours now at any home improvement store, just $29.99. You fill it up, they pick it up on your schedule. The Bagster, dumpster in a bag. Buy, fill, gone. A Florida man was rushed to the hospital early Sunday morning after a hunter mistook him for a turkey and <laughs> shot him multiple times. Oh, man. Uh, the Bunel- I'm not a turkey! The Bunnell police said that officers were dispatched around 746 a.m. for reports of a person wounded in a shooting. Police said that the gobble, 911, gobble. 911 caller claimed they believed that they were shooting at an animal. Officers arrived at the scene and found a man who'd been shot in the head and torso with what appeared to be bird shot. Oh, uh, the victim was... At least air- it was bird shot. Yeah, exactly. He was uh, airlifted to a trauma center, so he was hurt. Officers spoke with the hunter who said that he was turkey hunting when he saw three female turkeys on the road. He told police that he followed them and then saw what appeared to be a male turkey. He fired his shotgun at the turkey, but in low light, he realized it was a decoy. He then heard someone shout that they had been shot. Hunter called 911 and expressed remorse for the shooting. Sorry about that. I thought you were a turkey. When uh, police arrived at the scene, they found a shotgun shell. I why that turkey was wearing the clothing. A stake to secure the decoy, a turkey call striker, and several small puddles of blood. Shoot him there before a turkey gets in his car. Uh, the Florida <laughs> Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission was notified of the shooting... Turkey's getting in his car. And shoot him. Is le- <laughs> leading the investigation. <laughs> UK residents in Lambourne and Hungerford are on the lookout for a cat shaver. Hmm. Some cat owners have taken to social media to report that their pets have come home with their fur shaved off. Oh my God, what happened? One homeowner uh, wrote, Keep your cats inside. The phantom cat shaver is about again. Oh, Somebody. No. Uh, Listen to this. What the hell is that? 84 incidents have been reported. 84? I was thinking like, I don't know, five, 84? Five, five or six people maybe. Five or six cats. 84 incidents have been reported. You have a serial pussy shaver. Uh, between <laughs> December in 22 and March of 23, it is suspected that the cat shaver lures the animals with treats before grabbing them and shaving them. So uh, are they are they harmed otherwise other than the shaving of the hair? Doesn't say the fur? I assume that's it. Yeah. I mean it's, it's insane. Insane. Yeah. just getting a free haircut, yeah. hopefully if they're not harming them. Mm-hmm. Uh in Boston, an arrest was made Monday after a series of suspicious fires at businesses in the shopping plaza. The police said Genesis Hurtado was arrested in connection with the fire on Monday at AutoZone and Saturday's fires at CVS Pharmacy and Marshall's. Hurtado was charged with three counts of arson and three counts of burning personal property. So Monday, Boston Fire responded to the auto zone uh, for what was a relatively small fire inside one of the aisles. Some merchandise, specifically seat covers, were set on fire. (laughs) An employee used a fire extinguisher on that, but there were two other fires in the same plaza that same night. In one case, a woman went into a CVS and set some diapers on fire. What the hell's going on? And then in the other fire, a woman went into Marshall's and set a pair of pajamas on fire. Police said uh, Hurtado admitted to setting all three fires, although they do not know why. I like fire. Trying trying to find that out. A Georgia mom whipped up a fragrant frenzy on social media this week after warning parents in a now viral video that their teens have found a peculiar new way to get high, and that is by sniffing nutmeg. 
by Sif- sniffing what? nutmeg. nutmeg. And, Interesting. And it's actually legit. Yeah. Uh, the woman who goes by the name Lakeview Living, Lakeview Living on TikTok, ignited the controversy after speaking with a teacher who related the issue that schools in their area are experience, experiencing with the uh, baking ingredient. Uh, her friend told her that uh, something wild happened. She said that uh, an area school recently had conducted a backpack check during which teachers found bottles of nutmeg in a couple of students' bags. When the students were asked why they had the uh, eggnog essentials in their bags, they said it was for culinary class. Well, a fellow teacher approached culinary instructor and they said, we don't know what you're talking about. Not my not- son in his room, he said he was at a seahorse party. <laughs> not making anything with nutmeg. Apparently, the school's resource officer had asked which students had nutmeg. He found the students in their classrooms and confiscated the nutmeg and they got suspended and because teenagers have figured out you can use nutmeg to get high she explained some commenters uh, below the video said that they heard about nutmeg poisoning one said i took care of a kid years ago at the hospital for nutmeg intoxication it was the first time i'd heard of it started in jails but they have internet so i'm sure that's where they learned i wonder how this works in the system to get the high uh while generally used as a household spice it sometimes is abused for narcotic and narcotic and hallucinogenic properties according to the encyclopedia of toxicology it's also hazardous and potentially fatal uh the initial symptoms of taking a large dose include giddiness tingling euphoria and hallucinations the hallucinations can include changed perception in time and space detachment from reality and a fear of death following delirium and drowsiness so are they taking it orally are they sniffing it yeah they're they're snorting it uh other side effects include headache nausea vomiting abdominal pain dizziness chest pain flushing tremor and trachycardia sounds like a great time terrific uh people have been accidentally overdosing on the popular pie spice for 400 years apparently didn't know that uh students have recently been attempting to huff nutmeg because of a social media trend so it's dangerous to do that keep that in mind one last story a glitch let commercial bank of ethiopia customers withdraw money that they did not have students first noticed the glitch and spread the news causing lines to form at campus atms on saturday by the time the bank discovered the problem more than 40 million dollars wow. had been withdrawn or transferred to other banks. 40 million dollars. The bank is now struggling to recover the money and says anyone who returns the funds will not be charged with a crime. But I mean, it's like walking up to an ATM and just saying, take what you Let want. Let rip. And they did. Wow. And there Jeez. you go. That is what I have in the bizarre file. <laughs> You're not getting me. a lot of that back. Uh, no. All right. I have, we don't have money, but we do have sticky buns. And I have a fifty dollars gift card mm. to Miss Ooh, wee. They're sticky. Some of that real sticky, icky, icky. Ooh, wee. They are. We'll take call number ten at two one five two six three WMMR, and they are now taking pre orders in stock or online for Easter mm. at Mister Sticky Bun, Mister Sticky's Buns dot com. So you need to get these now. They work really hard on these things, and there's going to be a lot of people wanting them. Mister Sticky's warning: extremely addictive. Caller number ten. We're going to set you up. Be back in just a moment. Stay with us. Little Blues Traveler on 93.3. WMMR does you good. Run around. It is 1026. Thursday morning. The cusp of no sad, bro. Friday's approaching rapidly. We'll nudge it along even faster. We'll just keep things moving here. So... Today, we ask you a lesson question, and we give away as a prize a pair of tickets to the exclusive theatrical premiere of Hate to Love Nickelback, which will be in theaters for two nights, March 27th and 30th. So we need to know, uh, the latest addition to the Justine Institute includes this Gary Lauer Research Center studying what? 215-263-WMMR. It's a couple things. If you get at least one of them, I'll, I'll set you up. All right. So the latest addition to the Justine Institute includes this Gary Lauer Research Center studying what? 215-263-WMMR. We want you to call if you know the answer. The trash business is a gold mine. 93.3 WMMR with Preston and Steve's Hollywood Trash. Brought to you by Natural Lawn of America. Natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds since 1987. Get free seeding every year. Call 800-FREE-SEED-NOW. What's happening, Steve? Well, over $1 million worth of clothing from Kanye West 
latest fashion line has been stolen from an L.A. warehouse. Police are reportedly searching for the world's most pompous-looking thief. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. my God. And yet in another long line of United, Arts prob- uh, United Airlines excuse me, problems, when a flight on the way to Denver had to divert to Oregon after losing a huge rear panel, a spokesman for, the, uh, for United suggesting the airline might consider removing the wings and competing with Greyhound. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, uh, what's your name? Uh, Staunton, the actress from Downton Abbey. Imelda. El- right. Imelda, so, yeah. Yeah, Imelda Staunton confirming a third Downton Abbey movie is in the works. Staunton says the third movie involves all the audience favorites, including Bumblebee and Optimus Prime. <laughs> 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 Yo, we're going to look for an answer. See if somebody knows the latest edition of the Justine Institute, including, uh, it includes this Gary Lauer Research Center, which is studying what? 215-263-WMMR. I'll take either one of these things that I have here. Hi, Kevin, you're on the air. Oh, I got three testicles. Hey! <laughs> well done. All right, Justine Institute includes this Gary Lauer Research Center studying what? I believe it was robotics. Robotics. Uh, and scarecrows. Hey! All right, hang on, Kevin. We are going to give you a pair of tickets for the exclusive theatrical premiere of Hate to Love, Nickelback, which comes to select theaters two nights only, March 27th, 30th. Uh, Hate to Love, Nickelback tells the authentic story about the band from their humble beginnings in Hannah, Alberta, to their explosive global success in 2001, and highs and lows that followed. For tickets and info, visit nickelbackfilm.com. Another chance to win tickets at wmmr.com. No. Preston and Steve's Music News on 93.3 WMMR. Brought to you this morning by Dermatology Associates of Plymouth Meeting, recruiting for a non-segmental vitiligo study to test an investigational medication. Uh, adults 18 and older can register. You can go to Plymouth Meeting Dermatology.com. I hope I'm allowed to do this, but people, I've gotten a lot of emails because I'm joking every time you say that. I go, ooh, how does my skin look? People are asking who I see. I see Dr. Sadie. Dr. Uh, in, Sadie, this? In that yes. office. Yes. Oh, all right. Is that is Sadie first name or last uh, name? That's her last name, Dr. Nas Sadie. Okay. So the now classic Guns N' Roses debut album, Appetite for Destruction, has been chosen for induction into the Grammy Hall of Fame. Interesting. Released in July of 1987, it delivered hits like Welcome to the Jungle, Paradise City, and Sweet Child of Mine, of course, with over 30 million copies sold worldwide. It is also in the top 10 of best-selling albums of all time. Only 10 recordings made the cut this year. And other artists include the Doobie Brothers, Donna Summer, Wanda Jackson, and Charlie Pride. That album was yeah. seismic. It was a game changer. Yeah. It was like, never mind. From yeah. Nirvana. Yeah, yeah. Something, something struck a chord. It was a new direction for rock music. And uh, it was much needed. It was a breath of fresh air for sure. A live performance of Wanting and Waiting by the Black Crows is now online. It was recorded for an Amazon live stream just last week as part of their City Sessions concert. It's part of the Black Crows promotion for their 10th studio album, Happiness Bastards, which is their first original music in 15 years. And the show took place at the Music Hall of Williamsburg in Brooklyn. Def Leppard has released a one-off live performance from the historic venue, The Lead Mill, Uh, This unique set is one of the most intimate shows that the band has played in the UK or Europe in over 35 years. Released in conjunction of this week's Record Store Day, the album track list includes 13 songs such as Hysteria and Pour Some Sugar on Me. Uh, This is cool. The Ashes of Motorhead's legendary frontman, Lemmy Kilmeinster, will be enshrined at West Hollywood, California's famous Rainbow Bar and Grill oh. on the Sunset Strip. Yes. You were there, Case, right? Um, yeah. With wait, Jackie. Wait, the Rainbow, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a statue of Lemmy there. In um, Dave Grohl's autobiography, uh, Storyteller, he tells of meeting Lemmy. He tells, The whole book is about him meeting other rock stars and how amazing it is. But he said the interesting note about Lemmy yes. at the whiskey. He's like, or at the, at the, uh, the Rainbow. He said, you would not believe it literally was his second home. He was there one time, and a waitress came over. This is Dave Grohl saying this. Right, right. To give Lemmy his mail. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's how his often he was mail there. mail was coming to the rainbow. He was there so often. That's hilarious. Isn't it? I, I, what, was, what was the place like, Case? I, 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 I it probably was, cool. was there 
forever ago. I mean, listen, it was cool for a lot of different reasons. A, when you walk in there, like, um, I mean, it's it's like you're walking right into like 1987, right. like hair metal, and and I was completely underdressed. Jackie fit in perfectly, right, right, yeah. <laughs> but. Um, there were a lot of cool little nooks that you could go to. I mean, we essentially kind of like climbed up a ladder, yeah. uh, you know, to get to this one little really? area where uh, it, there were tables and seats and stuff. Yeah, uh, very very dimly lit. Uh, there was an outside portion of it all, uh, like you said, these these statues and stuff. And then uh, I mean, just pictures all over the place. And then wow. like the dining. I mean, it was it was definitely cool. I would like to go back there. Cool. Uh, let me dive on December twenty eighth, twenty fifteen, at the age of seventy. Uh, shortly after learning that he had been diagnosed with cancer. Uh, the following year, Rainbow Bar and Grill dedicated its patio to Lemmy and renamed it Lemmy's Lounge, a place that he spent a lot of time uh, when he wasn't touring. And then one final story is cool, too, and it involves somebody who's going to stop by tomorrow morning. Uh, Chicago and Friends in concert will premiere in select theaters across the country on April 18th and April 21st. Uh, founding member of the legendary Rock and Roll Hall of Fame band, Lee uh, Lofnane, said that uh, this concert film is a unique approach to any of our previous live performances. We very rarely play with guest artists, much less seven of them. So those celebrities include uh, Steve Vai, Robert Randolph, and the guy who's going to be in our studio performing live tomorrow morning, Chris Daughtry. Hey, how about that? And if you remember, when he came by Camp Out for Hunger, yeah. we were asking him all about this event and how cool it was to be in the company of Steve Vai in Chicago and all these other people. So... We'll have to, uh, you know, bring that up again tomorrow. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, the film captures the unplugged acapella arrangements of Chicago's hits as well as a full concert experience on top of that. And that is what I have in music news for you. Um, I think, do we, uh, Connor, Moose, do we still have one or more one more of those stickies? Okay, we do. Oh, we do. Okay, yeah. well, there was somebody popping up here. I didn't know what that was. Right, I don't so, know who that is either. Sticky. Right. Uh, okay. We're gonna do. We're gonna give this away. Yeah. We are gonna give away our final fifty dollars gift card for Mister Sticky. How about that? Call number eighteen two one five two six three WMMR. You get it, Mister Sticky's Sticky and Cinnamon Buns are in Pottstown. You want to follow them on Facebook at Mister Sticky's Pottstown for coupons and to see new menu items. Mister Sticky's warning: they are extremely addictive, and we can attest to that for sure. So call right now, number eighteen. You get it. We're gonna break. Come back. Wrap up the show. Stay with us. You got to love Mammoth, Wolfgang, Van Halen, 93.3, WNMR. It's everything that rocks. Preston and Steve show, 1042. And we are wrapping up our program for the day. We have had a very enjoyable day. And now we can officially say no sad bro. No sad bro. When Thursday's show ends, no sad bro begins. It sure does. And we would like to thank uh, Joanne. <laughs> McNally, thank you. I forgot her last name. She was awesome. She's terrific from, uh, from England. She's yeah. Irish. And yeah. uh, this is, I think, her the second part of her tour of the United States. So she's known more in Europe. Yeah, so we did a uh, Zoom interview, and she's uh, she's very beautiful and talented and funny and cool and witty person. So, yeah. Uh, that was cool to hook up with her. And she's doing a Monday night show at uh, Helium. Uh, so this Monday, 7 p.m., you want to laugh and enjoy a night, you, you go and see her. And thank you to Mr. Sticky! Hey! Mr. Some of that real sticky, yes. icky, icky. Uh, Mr. Stickies is located at 600 Heritage Drive in Pottstown, PA. And you can check out their website, MrStickiesBuns.com. All ooey-gooey good stuff. <laughs> it's so Loved funny. Loved it. Yeah. Uh, Jackie Bam Bam is here. Hey, hey, man. Good morning. How you doing, bud? I am wonderful. And I got to say good. Not that I'm rating the show. I'm not a Bill Weston <laughs> over here. But A plus today. I woke huh. up to the, uh, the music in the movie segment. Amazing. Risky business. Footloose. Casey never saw uh, Big Chill. Big Chill. And the beauty of that movie was there were songs in the movie that were not on the soundtrack ah. due to uh, legal problems, but a, a, an amazing segment. And then the, the, Nick pulled off the Vet Stadium, got imploded today. Paul Owens, the Hot Pants Girl, called in. My father called me. He bought me my first baseball game at good old Vet Stadium. Yeah. Ah. I mean, that era, Willie Montanez flipping the bat, and Steve Carlton, Tim McGraw, uh, t uh, t Tim McCarver. Yeah. Tom 
Chuck Steve, McGraw. Right. So. I, I said the same thing with Chuck in the hallway. <laughs> and uh, But, I mean, my dad said to mention the mascots, when you would get a home oh. run, it was Phil and Phyllis. That's right. They preceded the fanatic. Right. But when you got a home run, they would ring the bell. Those mascots, the same people that do my mummer suits, dress those mascots. Is that right? Aaron Del Bono. Huh. And I spoke to them this morning. They were listening. Those mascots got sold to good old Storybook Land. They're yep. out there They're in there. Storybook. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we used to go there. We had yeah. uh, we had season passes for Storybook Land, and mm -hmm. we'd take our kids, and they still have them set up there in the uh, park. It's that's cool. terrific. Yeah, yeah and the uh, hot pants girl mentioned uh, Ollie Brown, and I mean out there and left Gary Maddox, the Secretary of Defense. What? <laughs> what? But they, my dad said they would never win until we got Pete Rose, uh, Tommy Lasorda, and the Dodgers would always yeah. until we got Pete. Three yeah, years very cool. They get Pete Rose in 1980 and win the World Series. Right. You know what? Uh, it occurred to me, Preston, after we talked about the vet, is uh, it imploded 20 years ago today, but the Citizens Bank Park then opened like three weeks later, and it wasn't finished yet, right? So wow. they've been building both the Citizens Bank Park and the Link, of course, but uh, the the ballpark that's there now opened also in 2004. So <sighs> I didn't realize that it was, they were that close together. Yeah, that's that's playing it close. Yeah, yeah. And when Citizens Bank Park opened, it wasn't 100 percent finished. Like there were still uh, tiles that needed to go in bathrooms and. And some of the walkway wasn't done yet, so. Well, was, you remember you remember the original projection, Nick, for the uh, and for the whole area. I mean, actually, now they're moving into the next phase where they seem to be delivering on what um, is going to be around the park with the you know the, the additional things that they said. But I remember that that was there was a whole bunch on the board that didn't actually get. Um, green lane at yeah. that point. Well, so, not, yeah. not that long ago, the Phillies, I mean, this morning, they uh, announced that they're going to partner up with Comcast Spectacore on, on redevelopment plans for the entire sports complex. And Preston, you had that story a week or two ago, but it's going to be uh, new parking, new new a, a park. Um, so it's going to be a lot more green. And we'll see if they move forward with it because it'll look cool if they do. Ooh Love wee. it, Ooh, ooh, wee. <laughs> Hey, Jackie, let's get a letter. You ready? Let's get it. All right, here. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. Now, the Daily Letter. All right, the President and Steve Show is brought to you today by the letter... The letter Z, and in the words of Pierre Robert, zappa zappa cool, man. All right, we're going to give away a pair of pit tickets. <laughs> <laughs> thing. And concert t-shirts for MMRBQ 2024, Saturday, September 21st at Freedom of Mortgage and Pavilion. Tickets are on sale now. Keep in mind... Uh, that includes the early bird lawn ticket special, $25 plus fees, and that's available at Ticketmaster. Casey's turned on our disco. <laughs> no, yeah. well, Steve did. I, I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Woo! So what's up on the show today, Jackie? Uh, Eddie Money will be celebrating a birthday. You mentioned an uh, artist that played a camp out, did a great job at camp out. I spoke to his wife, Lori, and his daughter, Jess. They may might be calling in. They're definitely going to be listening to the out there in Los Angeles. Uh, Nick will be smiling on his ride home. It's a single versary of Pearl Jam's Not For You. We'll throw that in our workforce block. Nice. Uh, Roger Hodgson from uh, Super Tramps also celebrating a birthday. And the prize coffin, Pierre gives us John Fogarty, George Thurgood tickets. And again, then VIP passes to uh, sit at the Dover Motor Speedway Suite with yours truly and that freak over there, Casey Boy, <laughs> yeah. at the Worth 400. That's a mouthful. That is. All right, you got a bunch, Jack. We'll get out of your way here. I'm going to thank our sponsors, President Steve Show, brought to you today by Dunkin'. The President Steve Show runs on Dunkin'. Also, Acme Markets, Fresh Foods, Local Flavors, and Meineke Car Care. You won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. Uh, tomorrow on the program, as I said earlier, Daughtry, Chris Daughtry, Daughtry? in our studio performing live tomorrow yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah. So we'll get a song or two out of him. And we're also going to talk to another rock star, Mike Kruger of Nickelback, to talk about this Nickelback movie. Yes. That's very self-aware of what some people think of them, and uh, they have success nonetheless. I'm, I'm looking forward to this movie. Uh, so Mike's checking in with us as well, and it'll be nothing but no sad bro Friday tomorrow. That's it. We're done. Ray, John, and have yourself a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow, friend. Bye-bye. <laughs>